Right, I think we are live. Uh, as always, if you are watching this live, please let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. I've been having some computer issues in the last five minutes, uh, hence we're slightly delayed, and hence why you can't see Nigel in the top left. Um, so apologies for that, you can't see Nigel. Right, quick introduction. Uh, we're going to be playing Imperium tonight. We're going to be doing a two-player game. It's the two designers, Nigel Buckle in the top left, or at least he will be when I get it working. Uh, David Turtsy in the top right. I will say good evening to both of you. Hello Hi. and good evening. Hi, I would wave, but you can't see me. No, you can't see uh, you can't can't see Nigel for some reason. There you go. There I you know go. what it was. Right, Nigel is Nigel is here. Um, yeah. So thanks to the wondrous power of the internet and remote broadcasting, I can basically host a game between the two the two designers. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to you two for joining me tonight. We'll just give a quick introduction about Imperium. This is a new game designed by you two which is coming out by, uh, from Osprey Games. Uh, special people like me have had an advanced copy, but when's it going to go to retail? Is it in a couple of weeks? Yeah, end of the month, I think, is what I've been told. End of this month. I mean, some people have already got theirs, but... It's, Again, you know, yeah. It's getting special, there. Special people. I had to bribe people at Osprey Games with, um, yeah, two packs of Jaffa Cakes. Jaffa Cakes. Two packs of Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I'm doing a series of three three videos on this. I did a couple of solo playthroughs earlier this month. Uh, I've got this stream tonight and then next week a friend of mine is coming around and we're going to be playing a couple of games together as well. So you're going to see the two-player game tonight uh, and my patron supporters have been voting on which of the nations are going to use because uh, there's actually two versions of the game. There's Imperium Classics and Imperium Legends. Both boxes sold separately come with eight different nations. Uh, David, you are playing, is it the Celts or the Celts? Or well, we don't know. It's one of those two, definitely the stronger one. Because <laughs> I always thought it was the Celts, but apparently I've been told earlier on today that it might be the Celts. So as, as long as you don't pronounce the chin kin, we'll be fine. Right. OK, well, they're, they're not in the game. They're not in the game. So no, you're you're the playing game. them tonight. Uh, they yes. are a nation from box number one, which yes, is from the from classics. The classic box. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Nigel, you're playing the Arthurians, which is from box number two. That's it, from Legends. From Legends, yes. Um, now, each of the different nations you will see in the rulebook comes with a difficulty level. David, the difficulty level of yours is two. Yes. Nigel, the difficulty of yours is five. Now, Correct. I'm going to ask you a question now. The, the nations are all balanced, aren't they? Yes. Right. So what makes the Arthurians difficulty five? Are they just, they're harder to play, but they are balanced against the lower difficulty ones? Yeah, the, the difference, when you'll see when David plays the Celts, that there's certain key uh, utility cards that mm -hmm. most nations have. So a conquer to take land and tributaries, an advance card to take technologies, a glory card, Take yep. Spain. I haven't got any of those in this deck. Right. <laughs> um, I've got other ways of doing the same thing. Yep. Um, the other thing that's different is David starts as a barbarian and May, mm -hmm. despite looking fierce and barbaric, will eventually become an empire when yep. he goes through that stack of cards. Yep. Uh, I don't become an empire. Instead, my development deck are my quests, and I can go questing while I'm still a barbarian. Right. But my method of doing that is completely different. It's completely I different. Like King Arthur's call. Yeah. So the whole, the game just works differently. Yeah. So basically, uh, most of the nations all follow the rough logic of when you reshuffle, add a card to from your nation deck to mm -hmm. your discard. When you run out of it, become an empire, and then you can buy empire cards. And then towards the last four, it gets weirder and weirder. Yeah. And, and, and Arthurian is the an ultimate weirdest one yes so. yeah so yeah, if you I, have I, I will go through my deck but eventually when i get to the last card normally that's what you trigger becoming an empire yeah this will trigger the final battle where arthur in arthurian legend dies mm -hmm. or gets mortally wounded and goes to avalon so the, that battle will start and at that point i either start collecting lots of unrest or my knights, which you'll see as we play the game, are quite important, will start dying instead. Yeah. 
Okay, so if you have watched my two previous streams on this, the nations that I was playing in those streams were relatively simple. They certainly were in the first stream, and then when I moved on to the Egyptians afterwards, less simple. Uh, the Arthurians, you're going to see something very different tonight. So I'm glad that uh, my Patreon supporters voted on that one, um, because yeah, you're going to see you're going to see something very different. Also, just before we start. Uh, this is not necessarily going to be a tutorial. I've already done a couple of videos, and if you want to learn how to play, I would recommend certainly watching one of those. We're just going to be concentrating mainly tonight uh, on this being a playthrough. Uh, if you haven't seen the, the tutorials, then you're welcome, obviously, to stick around and watch along. Um, but you're probably better watching my, my earlier videos if you want to actually learn how to play the game. Uh, or the one next week, but that's not out yet. Right, okay. So the last thing Unless to do... You're into time travel games too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a time travel game, David. <laughs> so the last thing I'll, to do... I'll, I'll get right on it. ...is we need to decide who's going to go first. So evens, it will be King Arthur. And odds, it will be the, the Celts. Yep. It's a three. The battle for Britain is beginning. So it's, it's odds. Out. Now what you're supposed to do is there is a particular card, the Solstice card, that you're supposed to put in a certain position. But I'm not going to bother because it's only a two-player game, so we don't really need it. Uh, but basically what's going to happen is David's going to take a turn, then Nigel's going to take a turn, that's the end of the round, and then we do the solstice phase. But at the start of the game, neither player has any solstice in hand uh, or in play, so so that doesn't happen. Well, well it... the Arthurians have a solstice ability. Oh, you do? So, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Ah, right, okay, well, there you go. I've got two solstice abilities, one on my Arthurian card and one on my... One on you my do, ignore card. what I just said. There are two solstice abilities on there. Also, uh, just, complicated. just yeah. before we start, there are more cards than what you see here. Uh, first of all, each player's development pile of cards, if you're wondering where that is, I've got them off camera, okay? So these are David's development cards off camera. Uh, these are Nigel's development cards off camera. Each player also has a deck and a discard pile. Now, for the purposes of the stream, the way that this is going to work is David and Nigel are each managing their own decks and they're going to tell me what they play. And when their deck runs out, they're going to tell me that their deck runs out. So I will be playing their cards for you so you can see what they're doing, uh, but I'm not going to be managing their, their cards for them. So, David, you're up. Okay. Tell me what you're doing. Talk me through it. Well, well, well. So I'm the Celts, and the uh, Celts have uh, uh, on their power card, the basic version says two victory points per green, alias uh, uncivilized cards. Yep. But I'm playing the front side, the advanced side. Oh, you are, right, advanced. okay. And that one says exhaust. That means I can do this essentially once per turn. When you acquire uncivilized or breakthrough for uncivilized, I whenever I get an uncivilized, uh, exhaust this card, each other player takes an unrest. So every time I get smarter, Nigel will get unhappier. Okay. And that is my plan to pretty much give him, on average, one unrest every car. Every mm -hmm. turn. And that's not an attack. Yeah. Right. So the defensive abilities don't work against this. Right. Okay. Um, and, but the thing that the uh, Celts struggle with a lot is that they don't have prosperity, which is one of the... Uh, mm -hmm. one of the utility cards that Nigel has mentioned, and prosperity can make you a lot of materials or a steady amount of population. Now, I yeah. can't, therefore, I need other ways of getting population. Normally, I could spend one progress for one population, but that's a terrible rate. Luckily, I have Cauldron of Seridwen. Seridian. Um, yes, Keridian. Keridian. This one? Yeah, that yeah. one. We need some Welsh people in the chat. Okay, yep. do we have any Welsh people in the chat? <laughs> They'll have a good day because we're both playing Welsh-speaking decks. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is the highest concentration of Welsh historical references in a board game ever. <laughs> so your first action is to play this card? Yes, because this card will allow me to convert one uh, progress into two population each turn. Yeah, so the this is a card, card it's got the infinity icon on, so it stays in play in, in your like play area or tableau or whatever we want to call it. Yep. The second card is one of my so-called signature cards that you're going to see a lot in the game. It's Druids. So you're also playing Druids, which is not a permanent card. So this Correct. comes into play, it does its thing, and then it goes to your discard pile. Yep. And I can okay. choose between gaining a progress or paying a population to break through for green or return an unrest to gain a population. And as you guys have all guessed, I am going to spend the population to pick up the city. Okay. So you're paying a population, 
and you're going to take this card here. Now it says you can break through. So when you break through, you don't get the unrest. Ah, the unrest point. goes to the discard pile. But but I get it. Oh, but then because of the Celts ability, Davey's going to, assuming Davey's going to exhaust his um, power card. Yes, yes, I, I will. Assume he is. Right. So that unrest card goes to Nigel, and that goes to your discard pile. Yep. Yeah? No, it goes to my Not hand. Every, every oh, in your hand. Always goes to hand. Yeah. Except okay. development. Okay. And the city that goes to your hand, David. Yes, and as my third action, I'm going to take the shocking move of playing the city. Okay, so Sorry, the druids now go to your what, discard pile. What the deck refills, though, although I, I'm pretty certain I'm still going to play the city no matter what. Okay, so the new card that comes into play is a city. Did you shuffle, like, at all? <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. There's, like, two or three cities in the deck, so it's not impossible. Yeah, they're all on top. Okay. Sure. <laughs> And then that's the end of my turn. Druid goes into my discard pile, and I need to make a progress choice. And uh, I have a feeling that Nigel might feel like exiling green cards would be a good choice for him. So the unrest, the, the progress will go onto the city. Okay. So at the end of each player's turn, you must put a progress onto one of the cards in the market. And what's your thinking on that? Basic, uh, first of all, Temple and Metropolis should have a progress on it at start because mm -hmm. every white only card gets a progress at setup, which you haven't done, I think. At the beginning of the game, yeah. The, I didn't, I missed it. The Metropolis should have ever... That's just to stop players exiling the blue, the blue stuff early on when no one wants it. Right, because you can't exile a card that's got progress on it. Correct. So you can't exile a card that has any tokens on it. Any tokens playing, on it. <clears throat> if that you're playing it. with the Chin or the Carthaginians, then there might be other resources on cards too. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this made City more valuable to Nigel, so now he might just buy it. Yeah. But uh, City is primarily a deck accelerator, and Nigel is a weird deck, therefore he's one of the few people who doesn't want to crazy accelerate his deck. So right. I'm hoping he won't buy it. Okay. Okay. Right. So. Turn. Nigel, you have three actions. I have. So my first action, I'm going to start off with uh, King Arthur's father, Uther Pendragon, mm -hmm. which says, uh, break through for an uncivilized card and put this card in your history. Yep. So Uther does his thing and goes away. Does his thing and goes into history. So that is yep. effectively out of the game, but he's going to score you points at the end. Yeah, except he doesn't score any points, but never mind. It just means That's I can't true. play him again. <laughs> um, and just a shock. David, I'm going to take the city because it's got okay. some progress on it. And you that get goes the progress. Head. And it's a breakthrough, so I don't get the unrest. Yeah, so the unrest it's gets fine. discarded, get but he's actually going to... There's a new card that's come out, which is the port. Okay. Find the port. So that's your first action used. That's my first action used. My second action... Um, I don't really want that, I don't think. Right, my second action then, I'm going to play Britannia Secunda, which is a region. Which is a region, yep. Yep. So you draw a card when it comes into play. Yep. And then you may garrison a card if you want to. Yep, and I've just, that's interesting. Okay, well, I, I've just drawn a card that I'm actually going to garrison. I'm going to garrison Merlin. Okay. Meriden Wilt. Yeah, so we take Merlin, or Merlin's proper name, Muradin yeah, Wilt. Yeah. Uh, and garrisoning yeah. a card means that it is effectively, for now, removed from your deck discard pile cycle, but it could come back into play later on. Yep, he's off in the woods looking for rabbits or something. There we go. Yeah, there's one. Spotted it. It's there. Absolutely. It's on the card. So, <laughs> so that's if anyone second. can tell us why the, why the signature animal of the Arthurians is a uh, uh, white rabbit gets an extra... Uh, Gaming rules point. Okay, so 10 gaming rules points for anybody in the chat who knows the significance of why there is a, a white rabbit on the card. Yeah? Okay, right. Right, and your and third then action. My third action, I'm going to play Sir Percival, Pedro Dur, mm -hmm. who is, he says, I can choose to return an unrest um, and then garrison him in a region to trigger the card's effect again, or I can find the grail in my discard pile, but I haven't, well, the grail is still buried way in my quest, so I'm not doing that for the second bit. Right. So I'm going to return an unrest. So the unrest that David so carefully gave, gave me is going back. Yep. And then 
Peridu's do you have to pay join. for that? No, just return it. Okay, That's right, nice. Peridu's special ability. And then he's also going to go garrison himself in the same woods. In the woods with Merlin looking for the white rabbit. Yep. And but then, that, when a knight garrisons themselves, that we get, to to do, uh, get to do the action again. So I get to draw another card from my ever depleting deck. So right. I'll draw another card. And you may three. garrison to trigger that card's play effect again, which is this. Which is, may draw a card, yep. Right, okay. I've drawn another card now. Yep, so and I'm you can garrison another, another card into this, is that right? No, uh, yes, I could. Yes, so I could now garrison another card in if I wanted right, to. interesting. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the tricks that the Arthurians have, which I'm going to explain while Niger is thinking, that mm -hmm. all knights have the ability, well, most knights have the ability to re-trigger a region, which means once you get one good region, you can send your whole horde of knights in there just to keep triggering it. Right, okay. There is a uh, question in the chat, uh, just quickly, yeah, yeah, uh, that I'm said... I'm typing, I'm typing. It's all right, I can answer it. In, in my playthrough, I only ever used one exhausting token at a time, but that's because the particular nations that I was using didn't really have many exhaust abilities. Um, but the other, some of the other nations have lots of exhaust abilities, and basically you can only do five of them in a turn. So that's why, the, that's why you get five exhaustion tokens, which I have off camera. And yeah, yeah. go look for the Olmex if you want exhaust actions. Right. Um, okay. I am not going to garrison another card because I quite like what I've got. Okay. So I am, I'm going to keep the four cards I've got and I'm just going to draw one extra one and that's me done right. apart from putting a progress out which I'm going to stick uh, on the temple. I'm make my day. On, on the, the temple? temple? Right. On the temple. Okay. So that yeah, is the end of the first round. So now we get... Solstice. solstice. The Solstice. Yep. So my first, my so my first action is to discard a card to gain a progress. Yeah, which I'll discard the city. Yep. And then the second action is, if there's no active quest on King Arthur's court and it isn't, mm -hmm. I can take an unrest. So I will. So okay. I'm so you take an unrest. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm gonna start a quest, and this time I'm gonna quest for. Uh, Let's start with let's start with the Excalibur. Okay, so your development area, which is normally like special advanced technologies that you get once you're an empire, for the yep. for King Arthur, these are quests. And yep. Because you didn't have a quest, you are now going on a quest to get Excalibur, and then yep. this card goes where it goes. Garris it gets garrisoned here. Get garrisoned under the court, yeah. Right. Okay, and that means you are now on a quest to find Excalibur. And if I am. Um right in remembering there are two ways you can get that card out of that either with the nice way by merlin sending the knights or the evil way by morgana doing some witchy things right absolutely okay right so just before and, we start and, the next and, round and, 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 and merlin's already up in the woods doing something else so <laughs> yes which way i'm going probably so just before we start the next round do you want to explain to people why there is a, a white rabbit on the card it is most definitely a reference to Monty Python's Holy Grail. There you go. <laughs> so 10 oh, points uh, to anybody who got that reference. Most nations have a, 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 a recurring animal on their region illustrations because there were only so many ways we could ask uh, the Miko to draw us a green hill. Right. So we were like, now do a green hill with a lion, and now a green hill with uh, the, I don't know, dragon. And, right. and then when, when we got to the Arthurians, we were like, so... Green Hill with a rabbit, then. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the, the Celts haven't got an animal. They've got Boudicca going right. off, exploring around all the places. So you'll see a red-haired woman. Yep, in various places. Adventuring through the various it, regions. Essentially, any, any nation where we had a strong lead character that thematically made sense on many of the cards is that character popping up. And anywhere where we had a bunch of leaders and none of them particularly yep. needy, then they got the animals. Cool. Right. So round two, cool. David, you're up. Round two. Well, I, I did have one solstice though, the, the playing the city, but yep. I am. Oh, you I did. Am trouble this, but I'm gonna discard one unrest to draw a card. Okay. Cool. Uh, so my three actions will be as follows. 
first I'm gonna send a cattle raid Nigel's way that says gain two materials, steal one material from each player with at least one region in play. It would be shame if Nigel had a region in play. I I gain two materials. Yeah, so he steals one of mine. And then he steals one of your materials. So I now gain three more materials, which means I'm up to six, and Nigel's down to two. Much yep. better balance of things. Then I am going to use uh, the exhaust token on Cauldron of Seridan to turn this one progress into two population, but don't bother taking them because I'm playing Conquer to spend those two population to pick up the Egyptians along with the unrest. Okay, so exhausting this card. By the way, this exhaustion token should have been removed. Yeah, uh, yeah. So exhaustion is not an action. It's just something that you can do, but you can do a maximum of five exhaust things. So you've paid a progress to gain two population. Mm -hmm. So we need to pay the progress. Mm -hmm. You now have no progress, mm -hmm. but you then use that two population. You play conquer. Are you paying the extra one or are you just paying the two? No, he's paying the two, two, so he gets the unrest. Okay, and what you're taking? Super precious for me. I'm okay. taking the Egyptians. You're taking the Egyptians. So it comes with the Egyptians. It comes with the unrest. Conquer goes to your discard pile. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians and the unrest goes to your hand. And the card it is replaced by is... It is the Assyrians, which okay. come with unrest. I'm just going to check I shuffled these. I'm pretty sure I did. Yes, I did. Ah. I mean, I like the Egyptians, but I would have liked the Assyrians more. Okay. Um, right. Is that your second action? Yes. In that case, the third action. What does the food plan do? That's not half bad. That is not half bad. I will play Bodica mm -hmm. from my hand, which is gain one progress. Gain a progress. Each other player abandons a region. It would right. be really a shame if Nigel had a region. It would. Full of garrisoned people. Oh, we'll go to my yep. discard. Yeah. Yep. So, and then yeah. Bodica is very happy with her glorious campaign and goes into my history. history. Yeah. She's Bodica's history. done a thing and has gone. Uh, so this yeah. region and everything that was garrisoned with it now goes into Nigel's discard pile. Sorry, Nigel. That's okay. Okay, that's your three so actions done. People voted for an aggressive deck. Yes. So that is my three actions done. I will. Uh, ba, 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 I will. Well, do I want to discard one of these things? Mm. Yes, I will be discarding the Egyptians. Nope, not the Egyptians. I will be discarding Glory mm -hmm. to draw the last two cards from my deck. Okay, so your deck is empty. Yes. Does that trigger the thing now? Or no. Only Next time I need to draw a Only card. when you need to draw a card. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. So, progress. Which one's it going on? The progress is... I, I mean, I'm tempted to put it on port, but I have the bad feeling that Nigel will just be evil to me. Although, I really need to learn the Arthurian deck, how many cards they can buy. Because, for example, if I knew that they're starting leader based through for green, then I wouldn't have put the stuff there. Um, but... Give me one sec. This just bothers me with all the basic races, uh, nations. I know what they can do on their first and their second turn, but not with the Arthurians. <laughs> uh, if I've got Guinevere in my hand. Yeah. Yeah, then you can buy a green or a white if you have Guinevere. And, but I blocked King Arthur, so that's less of a problem. So let's put the progress token on uh, the flat plane, please. Okay. Right. Nigel, your go. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play Britannia Primer, which is another region. Mm -hmm. Bunnies. I get to draw a card. More bunnies. Remind me, David, exhaustion tokens go at the end of your turn, don't they? Yes, at, after, yeah. after yes. you've drawn your cards, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, just before you've drawn the new yes. card, that yes. was one thing we yes. That's right. had some suffering with. Okay, so next one, so that's my first action. Second action. Are you garrisoning a card there? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, right. Second action, I'm playing a Sakai who says I can draw, I can return a region from my discard pile to the top of my deck. So yeah. I'll bring back 
Britannia Secunda, Secunda to my, on top, top of the deck. So from your discard pile on top of your deck, yep. Yep. And then I've and then Sakai will then garrison in Britannia Primer. To trigger the effect of Britannia Primer again. Yeah, which I'll draw a card, which oh it's Britannia It's Secunda. right, nice, yep. So I've drawn that. Um, I'm not going to garrison the card, so then okay. I've, got one, I've got one action left. Um, and then I think at this point I'm going to discard Cafel, uh, King Arthur's dog, and King Arthur himself to return the unrest. Ah, so you're voluntarily returning an unrest card from your hand. As an action, you do that discarding, by either paying a population card. or discarding two cards or paying three yep. materials. Can you give you me a quick count of the unrest deck? I've got... Because that's the one thing I forgot to maintain. I've got five cards in the unrest deck. Yep, cool. Thank you. Okay. So for those people who don't know, there's two ways this, can get, this game can end. Sorry. There's two main ways the game can end, in a normal way and in a, in a bad way. The bad way is when the unrest deck runs out, at which point the player is the one, oh, sorry, the winner is the player with the fewest unrest cards, full stop. There is a tie break. Uh, but if the game ends in one of the other ways, then we do the victory point system. Um, how many times, just out of interest, does it end with the whatever it's called? Uh, call out. Should Collapse. Yeah, it shouldn't unless people Some, are ignoring yeah. unrest. If okay, one right. player is playing very brinkmanshiply and the other person says, I bet you have one more than I do. Right, okay, right. Or or or, or it's more like a, I dare you to take that card. Right. I see. Yeah. Or, everyone so just goes, or everyone just starts buying stuff and forgetting and then and forgetting about their, <laughs> and get oh, yeah, collapse. their unrest. Right. So that's your three actions done. <clears throat> yep. So now place I'm a gonna, progress. Yeah, I'm going to place a progress on the Metropolis. Yep, two progress on there now, and then we have Solstice. Uh, now, firstly, I've got a, I've got no draw deck, so I'm oh gonna right, to, I'm going to have to add a card from my. So the card I'm adding the top card, I've got Vivian of the Lake. Okay, so because uh, Nigel's deck is empty, he gets the top card from this area. What's this deck called again? Nation deck. Nation deck, that's it. Yep. Uh, and it is public information, so you've drawn which one? Vivian of the Lake. Vivian of the Lake, that goes which is great, from there yeah, into think, the discard pile. Yeah, she's quite good, obviously, with the sword, but I've got to yep. get the sword first. And then you shuffle your discard pile to form right, a new and deck, they, yeah, and, I'm and then draw two back cards. to five. Yeah. I need to look at that sword to know what's going to hit me. Abandon Vivian of the Lake to break through. Oh, God. Oh, this right. is going to hurt. <laughs> and now we go into the solstice phase. So. Yep. Yep. Nigel, are you discarding a card to gain a progress? Yes, I am going to discard a card. I'm going to okay. discard. Um, Guinevere is going to be discarded to right. gain a progress. And what happens now with King Arthur's Court? Can you do anything or not? Um, no, the only thing I no. can do is if there's no active quest there, I can take an unrest to garrison it. There's nothing I can do there. Right. Um, and the only, I've got an exhaust ability, but I need Camelot in play, and right. that hasn't appeared yet. So So how do you complete that quest? I, I I need another card. So if, for example, you were to go find Merlin. Yeah. If you look at Merlin, he tells you what he needs to do. Got it. Got it. Bang okay. Three knights. Yeah. That, nice. They're off questing. I see. David, would you like to do your Solstice ability? Yes, my Solstice ability is to discard one unrest, to draw a card which reshuffles my deck as well, and I have drawn Belgica. Which is another region. Uh, yep. Belgica, the one with the canoe on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think right. you'll find that Boudicca's in that canoe, if you look carefully. Oh, uh, yeah, at the front. Yeah, okay, cool. There's uh, lots so that... of at least directs that Miko's put in the art. Right, so that goes into your discard pile, and then you reshuffle and you draw back to five, and it is then your turn. Yes. I uh, So there are two progress on Temple, two progress on Metropolis, one progress on the Flood Plains. Am I right? You are correct. And yeah. yet my hand really does not want me to do any of those things. <laughs> um, 
which is really, really unfortunate. So I'm just going to do what I'm good at, and I'm going to play Advance with five materials. Right, so the Advance card can only be played if you are a Barbarian State, which is what the Axes are, and you're going to pay five materials. To break through for Port and give the lovely unrest to Nigel. Five. So you're going to break through to take this port. Mm -hmm. And because you broke through, you don't get the unrest. But then because of your ability, Nigel gets the unrest. Mm -hmm. Okay. The port then... is replaced by boats. Ooh. That's sexy. Four cards that... in the unrest pile. That really fits what I want to do. Okay. So mm -hmm. what was your first action? Okay, my second action is to play uh, Celtica. Which is another region. Yep. Uh, it One is. With a slight misprint on it. That's I was going to say, it's, it's a region card, but it's grey at the top. Is that wrong? Yeah, it shouldn't be. That's a misprint. Not it's in the next era, at least. Okay, so it should be yellow. Uh, right, yep. gotcha. And that puts the advance... Sorry, no, other way around. This is going to be my third action, so don't put it anywhere. But okay. I'm first playing the Egyptians. Aha, here they come. And they go in straight into my history, and they flip the top card of my nation deck. Dropping well, let's just it. have a look at this. If you are a barbarian state, which you are, put the top card of your nation deck into your discard pile. Mm -hmm. If you were an empire, you would develop instead, and then the Egyptians goes into your history. So the Egyptians, Egyptians are done. They've done their thing. They go to your history. And you've put the top card from your nation deck into your discard pile, which was what? Which was Armorica. Yeah. Another region. Another region. Okay, got and it. And then my third action, as promised, is playing Celtica. Yeah. To put uh, the advance back on the top of my deck. And that's it. So you may place a card of your choice from your discard pile back on top of your deck. Okay. And are you gonna gonna garrison a card? No, I will not. Right. Okay. And then at the end of my turn, I discard two unrest cards because right. I feel lucky, and I'm gonna lose the game horribly on collapse in two turns, but it's fine. And then I draw four cards from my deck. And which card are you putting the progress on? Uh, the progress goes on the on boats. Wait, okay. Nigel already played Giniver, but since reshuffled. Pendragon is out, and the rest can't take green. So all I need is Nigel to have not drawn Giniver. I okay. can live with that. No, she didn't me this card, Paul, because I discarded Excellent. the Excellent. There we go. I was hoping you would say that. Uh, Sean makes a very good point in the chat that he thinks he will only understand this game once you've got it on the table. Now, I've heard that from a few people who read through the rule book when it was available online, and after reading through the rule book, didn't have the faintest idea how it was going to play until they actually saw it being played, at which point everything just sort of clicked into place. Whereas me, I actually learned how to play the game while sitting with it in front of me and going through the rulebook at the same time. So for me, I didn't have that, um, but that is something that I've heard from a few people. So if you are one of those people that's read through the rulebook and gone, I have no idea what's going on here, then hopefully seeing it being played uh, will help that. Cool. Okay, Nigel, you're up. Yep. So, um, my first action to do that. I can do that. And I can do that. Okay. So, my first action is going to be to play Sir Percival again. Here he is again. And the unrest goes back. Okay. So, you're returning an unrest. Yep, from my hand. Yep, from your hand. Then he's then, gonna go. He's gonna go sit in Britannia Primer. Britannia Primer again, before he got me, rudely <laughs> disrupted last time when Boudica came along. Yeah, which lets me draw a card. Yeah. Um, and then I can also garrison a card. I'm gonna garrison mm -hmm. Merlin in uh -huh. with him. Yeah. So Merlin is also getting garrisoned. So that was just my first action. Yep. Second action, Morgana's gonna turn up. Right. I'm going for the. I'm going. I'm following the dark path. All uh, players take unrest. 
That includes me and that includes David. Right, oh, David, God, have I'm an unrest. Oh, God, I'm going to lose on collapse. <laughs> okay. So then I have three cards in the unrest pile, just, just so you know. Yeah, three. Gonna, God damn it. Then I'm going <laughs> to abandon um, Britannia Primer with all those knights and Merlin to my right. discard pile to put my active quest on top in. In my discard pile, so Excalibur's yeah. now in the discard in pile. In the discard pile. And I get the top card of, of your my, nation um... deck in the discard pile. Okay, Correct. so this, let's just have a look at this. This is Morgana. Uh, all players get unrest. You may abandon a region with garrisoned Merlin. So Merlin has to be in the region that you yeah. abandon. And you get your active quest, which is Excalibur, yeah, into, into your discard, discard pile, along with the top card of your nation deck, which is... Yeah. Lady Berwick. Uh, Lady Berwick. Right. Okay. There you with go. The green Knight. She's on there with the Green Knight. There you go. Interesting. Okay. So that's all of this, this region, and all of the cards that it was abandoned yep. with, as well as Morgana in your discard pile. Yep. I that was nice. that was my, so badly. That was my okay. second action. I've got one action left. Mm -hmm. Um. I think. I'm just going to play out Vivian of the Lake, which gets me an um, which gets me a progress. Vivian, yeah, I thought you were going to say <laughs> rest there for a minute. So you get a progress, and that stays in play. It's a region, and then in the solstice phase, you can do something. Right? Okay. Correct. And then so, at that point, I'm going to discard my unrest from my hand, leave me one card. Yeah. I draw the three cards from a draw deck, so I need another card. So you're so triggering I need another. another card. Uh, except I won't, I won't add a card from my deck because I would have put an exhaust marker on there. Every time, every time you add, does it only, even when it's from an ability? Good point. Even when it's from, yeah, I wasn't sure it did. So I think Anthony, if, he wrote yeah. the rules. Yeah, that's, that's an Anthony question. That's okay, well, we've, find, we've, we've got the rule book here. Yeah, I'm uh, too. Maybe it's only in cleanup, in which case... I think it's only one. in cleanup. Uh, it's, only, oh, it's only in cleanup or if, if, if it happens due to card drawing. So if I play Prosperity and you have a deck of one card, then that right, happens. So in which case I'll get another one. Yeah, yep, you get another one. This time it's the City of Camelot. Aha, uh -huh. right. So the City oh, of God. Camelot goes in your discard pile. Well, at least I'll lose quickly. Okay, right. So we are now putting a progress token on. Yeah, when we'll stick the progress token on. Let's stick it on the Assyrians. Okay, and then we do a solstice phase. Yep. So, Nigel, do you want to do yours first? Yep. So, um,. Do I want to take an unrest? Mm, that's the question. Yeah, I will take an unrest to trigger King Arthur's call. Yeah. So you're going on a quest for what? This time, I think I'm going to go on a quest for uh, Tellers and the Bard. Okay. So you're going on a quest for Tellers and the Bard. And do you want to discard a card to gain a progress? Yeah, I'm going to discard the unrest I've just taken. Yeah. To get a progress. Get a progress. Right. David, your soul's disabilities. I am going to discard one card, which is glory. And I just need to decide whether I want to draw a card or gain a material. Oh, and I'm sorry, I also need to do Vivian as well. Which oh, I you do? Either, I either have to recall a garrison, though it's not, or draw a card. So I get to draw another card. Okay. I will take the very unusual choice of... Uh, 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 Nigel, a progress is two materials, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 One, mm. one, one, one person of two materials, yeah. Yep, yep, gotcha. In that case, no, I'm going to stick to the usual method and I will... Ah, oh, there are so many things I want. This is painful. Uh, so there... Uh, I'll take the... the uh, so I, I'll take a population then. This okay. Is gonna... This is going to end horribly. Um, cool. First action, I, Nigel has a region Hang on. in play. Hang on. Just before you start your turn, I just want yeah. you to talk for a minute about what you've been saying about the unrest. 
what what situation are you now finding yourself in tactically basically i am unsure that niger has one more unrest than i am mm -hmm. and while i can give him one he can read one on his turn much easier than i do right which means that if i give him one and myself one but then he triggers collapse on his turn then he'll have fewer unrest than i do okay so you're concerned that the unrest deck only has two cards in it yes and, and if could... you were to give him one of these you think you would lose yep. Yes. Right. Yes. It, or let's see what I like. I have a very inefficient plan to keep going, but we'll see. Okay. So, first action is gonna. Nigel has a region in play, and it's a fun one, right? Yep. Yes. So it's gonna be my usual move of a cut kettle raid to take three materials, one of which comes from Nigel. So I have so, no materials left now. Yeah. Uh, I had you with two materials. Okay. I've probably got one left then after you've taken yeah. one. You've got one no, left. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Yep. Yeah. Do you even have a card that uses materials? You don't like look no. like it. No, I don't so, think you care about the cattle it. raid I'm has happened. Yeah, you don't Someone care asked about in the chat who I'm playing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, then the second action will be I now should have four materials. Four materials. Yep. I am now playing advance, paying two, ma three materials and the progress to break through for green. So you're playing advance, you're paying three materials. And then the two prog uh, progress. And a progress stuff. can count as two materials when paying mm -hmm. for something. So you break through, and which what are you breaking through for? He wants the, the boats. Thing. Yep, obviously the boats. The boats, okay. Yes, so I, you I break have through water. for that. And, and, I then, and, I, and then I get an unrest. So you yep. get the boats into your hand. The unrest goes there. And we get a new card that's come out, which is a city. Which gets the unrest. There, yep. there is one and unrest this, in the deck. And this is where the un inefficient move remains. I am, as my third action, returning one unrest card into the pile yep. by discarding uh boats and bell guitar okay no wait that might be stupid uh the other way is stupid too well that's what <laughs> i get um but it's definitely the boats it's yeah it's gonna be the port i don't have time to get it in play right now okay one two three i am one card short so i am okay. gonna reshuffle what card are you putting from your nation deck into your disco pile We'll find out is my second conquer. Second conquer. Okay. Right. And then we put a progress on a card. Which will be um Ooh, Niger, Niger, Niger. What do you have to take uh, tributaries? King Arthur hasn't come yet, right? Well he's been and he... gone, but yeah, he's come round again. Yeah. But you don't have a garrison knight, so you would need two knights and two actions. What does Vivian of the Lake do? Gives you a progress. It might be worth it for you. <laughs> I mean, there is a progress on flood plains. Mm -hmm, there is. You can't break through for. Uh, Arthur is not breakthrough, Arthur is just the acquire, yes. So I dare you to take the Assyrians. So you're putting it on the Assyrians? Yes. Right. Okay. Cool. So Nigel. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play Excalibur. Okay, so Excalibur comes out. This was a quest oh, that you'd gone on. Of course I forgot to check it. Thank you. It was nice planning my defeat. So it <laughs> says... Um, Abandon Vivian of the Lake, so she yeah. goes into the discard pile. Yeah. So break through for sorry, a white yeah. or a tributary. tributary. Yeah. So I'm going to break through for the Assyrians. Yeah. So yeah. you get the Assyrians and the two progress that's on it, but you do not get the. I don't get the unrest. Unrest. It's interesting because your two decks have been breaking through a lot, whereas when I was playing, I was acquiring a lot. Because well, you were. Well, Dave has been. Davy's been choosing to choosing to pay over the top to true 
to break through, really. Because You've got cars which are breaking through. Yeah. But he's okay. been questing for them, and I've been dumb enough to not check his quest okay. cards. Okay. Interesting. The new card that's come out is a region, which means it doesn't come with an unrest, which the means the unrest pile is now three. So collapse has been Avoided. put off for another day. <laughs> yep. So that that was my first. That was your first, first action. action. Yeah. Second action. I'm, well, not an action. I'm going to free play the Assyrians just to gain a population. Yeah, because it's free play, gain a population, doesn't cost an action. Correct. Okay. Then um, I'm going to play. Britannia Secunda. Second action. Britannia Secunda. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to garrison Sakai in there. Not for his ability. I'm just using him. I'm just garrisoning him so I've got a knight garrison. Yeah. Okay. So now King Arthur does something fun. Well, King Arthur could do something fun, but it's actually Lady Betak. Beretic's oh. going to. So the Green Knights too. turned up. Uh, so that's a free play. So you can abandon a region with a knight garrisoned. Sorry, which card is this you're playing? Lady. Lady. Yep. Lady Bertilac. Bertilac. Yep. That's probably not how you pronounce it. Her uh, with the uh, yeah she's from from the um, Sir Gwain, the Green Knight. She's the uh, she's his, she's the Green Knight's wife. Right. So, so free play. We'll abandon a region that has a knight garrisoned in it, which is that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I draw two cards. You draw two cards, and each other player discards two cards. Nigel, why do you hate me so much? <laughs> so I'm drawing two cards. Yeah, and David discards two cards. I will discard an Unrest and Belgica. And, and cry. I've got, and I've got one action left. Mm -hmm. Do I want to race it? Yeah, okay. I'm going to free play Cafal, which is King Arthur's dog, which is draw the top two cards on the deck. So I'm going to draw another two cards. I can't find it. Where is it? Is it the one with the picture of the dog on it? Yeah, it's the one with the dog yeah. on it. Surprisingly. Ah, it's there. So you're playing that. Yep. Yeah. Free play. Draw the top two cards of the deck, if able. Yep, yeah, I can. Cause that, that's your deck, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, now uh, and return a card to the top, top of your deck. Uh, uh, and you may exile uh, that card that I can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the boar that he hunts. Oh, okay, right. If it was in play or is the active quest. Okay. And it's not, so I can't. Right, okay. Um, so well, I'm going to stick back on top of my deck. Got to think about this for one sec. I'll stick that back. Right, okay. And then my final action, I'm just going to play Camelot. Right. That's, Which, is it a regular city, or do I yeah, have to just, dread something no, more? No, it's a regular city, but it does it does work with uh, King Arthur's call. Oh, great. So, City of Camelot is in play. Yeah, which yeah. I'm going to do. I'm going to now exhaust. I'm now going to exhaust. Um, King Arthur's court. Yeah, and discard a card. Yeah. Which will be. Uh, um, Sir Percival. Which returns an unrest. And the unrest gets put back. Okay, so the unrest pile is now four, well out of the danger zone. Well, I'm on a highway to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, me right. done. I've done my three actions. I've got three cards left in hand. Yep. And I've got four cards in my draw deck. So I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to draw, yeah, progress. We can stick we stick progress on the region, the steps. Yeah. And, and my source this is I'm gonna discard an unrest to draw so a card. Draw, drawing two more cards, so yeah. So David's done his solstice ability, ability and Nigel. Yes, my solstice ability. Um I can't do anything because I've still got the bard there. Yeah. Um but I can discard a card for another progress. You can. And I will discard Guinevere. Okay, you have nine progress now. Another progress, yeah. And are you discarding a card for the City of Camelot? Uh, yes, I will. I'm going to discard an unrest to draw um, to draw another card. Okay, right. So that's the solstice phase over. So now we go to the start of next round. 
Coolio. I, I think he's am... round four or five. I don't know. I don't count. I'm going to play Conqueror. Yep. To pay one pop. No, um, to pay just the progress because Calder of Carridon uh, converts it into two pop. Oh, so you're using yep. Cauldron to convert the progress into two population. Yes. Yeah, and then you're spending how much for Conquer? Uh, those two. Just those because two? Because I'm taking Floodplain. Yeah, he's taking the Floodplain. Oh, right, okay. So there's no unrest to worry about. There's no about. unrest on it. So you get that. Yep. Floodplain goes into your hand. Conquer goes to your discard pile. That is your first action. And it is and replaced you... by the Hills. Okay, okay. Understood. Um, then as my second action, I'm going to play Druids to pay one population to break through for, surprisingly, the city. So and you're paying one population to break through for the city. That's really good. Yeah. That's my Very signature good. card. Right. Okay. So the Druids to break through for the city so you don't get the unrest that it comes with. But Nigel does. I think. Nigel does, because of your Celt's ability, which is a once per turn. Yep. And there was two of my actions. Okay, that's replaced by the Oracle, which does come with an unrest. God damn it. Why do get I get guide cards always in the wrong order? Uh, I would have much preferred the Oracle to this. And is it, is it two cards left in the unrest deck? There's like three now. Oh, it's three, right. I missed yeah. yeah. Was that your second action, David? That was indeed my second action. Yeah. And then my third action will be play putting the city on the table. Okay, I'm just going to stack it on top of the other city. Yep, there and then I'm discarding boats and drawing four cards. Any reshuffling nonsense? Nope, not yet. Okay, progress token. Um, Let me look at my hand. What can I possibly buy next turn? Um, heels, please. Okay. Nigel, your go. Okay. I'm going to play Britannia Primer. I can't mm -hmm. draw a card, so I'm going to take the top card of my... Um, which is Saberavir. When you're saying you can't draw a card? No, because my deck's empty. Ah, uh, and you only do the reshuffle at the end of your... So, well, you, you only reshuffle if you, if, you, if you need to draw a card and you can't draw one. But that's now, isn't it? So it's now, exactly. So now I am at, I'm, I'm adding the card from my... Oh, right, yeah, okay. I'm adding Saberabir. Yeah. And then I'm shuffling up. Yep. Yeah. I'm drawing a card. Okay. And then I can garrison a card in there. I'm going to garrison Merlin in Britannia Primer. I'm going to cry. Getting efficient, and I still haven't doubted all my unrest. Then Merlin gone. Second, second action. There he is. Morgana comes out again. Yep. Everybody gets an unrest. Oh, uh. she's trouble. Mm-hmm. She is. So both so players get an unrest. Well. There is one card left in the unrest deck. Uh, and are you going to abandon I the am region gonna have, gonna with add, Merlin? With Merlin, yeah. Okay. To add Talizan to my discard pile. So that quest goes into your discard pile as well as the top card from your nation yeah, deck. Yeah, which is Avalon this time. Yep. Yeah. Or how do you pronounce its official name? Oh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I'm not well. Bonus points for anybody who can pronounce this. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to insult the Welsh by trying. Right. I need to drink some Guinness first, I think. <laughs> Although that's Irish. But, that's um, Irish. Still okay. insulting someone. <laughs> it's all chaotic. Right. Um, so that's the second action. I've got one action left. Um, at this point, I am going to play Vivian of the Lake, mm -hmm. garrisoning it with King Arthur, and I get another progress. So Vivian of the Lake, garrisoned with King Arthur, and you gain a progress. Correct. Okay. 
that is my three actions done. There you go. Solves this. Well, yeah, I've got to discard. I'm going to discard the city from my hands. Got two cards, and I'm going to draw up. Okay. Where's the progress go? Oh, Does sorry, yeah, progress. My solstice. Yeah. Uh, progress will stick on the metropolis. Three progress on the metropolis. Okay. okay. So I am discarding uh, port and conquer to draw two cards. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, and I'm also going to. I will have done exhaust action because Camelot's in play. Yeah. To that city I discarded to get rid of the unrest. Right. So okay, one yeah. unrest has gone back. Yeah, two cards in the unrest pile. As long as you had something to discard. I did. I had the city that I threw away. I was in, at the end of okay. the turn, still doing that. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. And then I can discard a card. I'll discard the Assyrians to get to get the progress, and then I can draw a card or recall King Arthur. I am going to. So you've discarded a card for the Arthurians card. Yeah. Are you now going to discard a card for the city of Camelot? No, I'm not going to discard a card for the city of Camelot. Okay, because that's but, optional. But, but now I've got to decide what I'm doing with Vivian, whether I'm going to recall King Arthur back to my hand. Yeah. No, I'm going to draw a card. with. You're going to draw a card? Yeah. Yeah. So this is interesting. This is something that I think I got wrong when I was doing one of my test playthroughs, is that Solstice abilities are mandatory unless it says otherwise. So the Arthurians is discard a card and gain a progress, that is mandatory. You have to do yeah. that yep. in the Solstice phase. Whereas Exhaust City of Camelot says you may. Optional, but once yeah. you start them, you need to finish them. Yeah. Whereas Solstices are automatic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and obviously the City is optional. You can choose to do it if you want to or not. Yeah, the City is optional because it says on it you may in big Correct. capital letters. Okay, just before we start the next round, we have somebody in the chat who's already pre-ordered uh, Legends. And he's saying it looks really good and he's wondering whether they should order classics too. I would have thought classics would be the one to start with because it contains the easier faction, the easier nations. Yeah, there's, think... there, there's, a, there's a couple in there in the, in the Legends box that aren't too difficult. Right. Uh, but you... also it's because I think uh, when people asked what's the difference between the boxes, we often mentioned that the classics box has the more aggressive nations. And I yeah. think for soul okay. players or, or Care Bear 2 players, they figured, oh, we'll start with the, the other one. But they're wrong because the way it's done, uh, they're not wrong. Like, like it's, there's no significant difference between the two. Yeah. Because what we've done is that the Classics box has more aggressive nations, but less attack cards in the common deck. And the right. Legends is the other way around. Oh, okay. Right. I see. Interesting. But, I, mean, I mean, I'd say, I mean, obviously, you know, yes, buy as many copies as you like. But um, if, if you're not if you're not sure, I'd play what you've bought. Yeah. And if you really like it, buy the other one because yeah. they are the same game. And if you go, um, it's not really for me, then you'll have two games. Exactly. That are not really for you. Yeah. Whereas if you play it and think this is brilliant, or I would really like it, but the, all the ones in this box are a little too hard for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then go get the other one. But, um, yeah. Okay. It's cool. Not, it's not a kick. It's not a kickstart. You've got two weeks to make your mind up. No, no, no. Retail, no. So. Plenty of time. Right. We're on to the next round. David. Okay. Um, did I do my solstice? I feel like I didn't because I'm waiting on Nigel to tell me where he put his progress. No, you did. I, I did. I put in the Metropolis. You oh. did yours first. You discarded two cards to gain two cards. Ah, yes. I've already done. That's why I have yep. so many. Why do I have one, two, three, four? Why do I have six cards? What? What? Did I cheat or did some? Oh, no. You gave me an unrest. Thank you yeah. so much for that. Um, with love, okay. wrapped up with a nice bow. Yes. So the thing, you know, Nigel, just between you and me as friends, cattle raid. To take doing it again? Yeah. Well, it's his, it's his last material. I'm never using it again. It's going to the history <laughs> after this. So cattle raid for your first action. You gain yeah. two materials and then you steal the last one from King Arthur. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Unrest count me, please. Two. Can, can you start just bleeping so I can swear? <laughs> okay, so Brett is helping us with the pronunciation of that card. And the first word 
it's, it's actually Inish. So it's Inish. Inish. I think now I know what that uh, board game might have been named about. Right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the person in the chat, uh, BG Kazbet, said they grabbed Legends first because Atlanteans, Egyptians, I think it has the more interesting yes, nations in there. Yes, but if you start with Atlanteans, what's going to happen is you're going to sink three times on your first reshuffle, and yeah. then on your second reshuffle, you realize you've lost. Right. So, <laughs> Run out of land. Yep, yep, you've literally sunk. Right. So, yeah, don't start with the Atlanteans. Don't that start playing the Atlanteans. Player. Le learn how to play from using the other races first. Okay. Yeah, or, or you play the Egyptians and develop everything and then realize you haven't got many points. Yeah. Okay. I am gonna play advance with uh, three materials and the progress. Counting as five, yeah. Yeah, and take the metropolis because, Nigel, I've really had it with you. <laughs> Look at that. How nice is that? And while right. I have the perfect third move, if I don't now return an unrest, it's Nigel's choice whether to, to, to try and sink me or not. Right. So this ability of the of the Celts or the Celts is just no, when no, no, you no, require no. an uncivilized card. Yeah, right. it doesn't trigger on white, but I but the uh, the Metropolis while it's not good for me, it's gonna be good for me eventually. Mm -hmm. Whereas Nigel has Giniver to get down a crown card early. And if I let him get down Metropolis now, I'm, 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 I'm you know, bye bye. Right. So mercenaries has come out as the replacement card. Yeah, and the three progress on it was not something I could let live. Yeah. So it it was not a card I needed now, but it was five victory points. And if it gets into Nigel's hand, um, the. Yeah. But the problem is now that I really have to play this uh, play an unrest now because otherwise it's you know crap yeah. down. So your second action? Uh, second action? Oh, this was my first action only. No, I cattle raided as my first oh, action. Oh, no, you cattle raided. So your third action? I would have had no problem if I had one more material, because then I didn't need to cattle raid. Mm -hmm. But uh, my third action is to play an unrest, discarding uh, Armorica and, uh, and Metropolis. OK. That's it. I, so he's I done. Said, you place I said, a progress on a card. Um, what re oh, you said mercenaries. Um, Oracle hit it with Oracle. Okay, let's let's live a little. What's the worst right. that can happen, right? Live okay. a little, live a lot. Yeah, yep. so Nigel, let's see what's going on here. You have the city of Camelot, you have Vivian of the Lake with King Arthur Garrison. King Arthur Garrison, it? correct. I do. Yep. I've got options. Kind I'm of... just going to move the screen over because it's got all the David's cards in. We don't want David's cards in. Just want no, we don't. I, need, I need to draw three cards, but I only have uh, one deck card in my deck, so I'm going to reshuffle. Oh, right. The new okay. card that goes in is Hibernia. Hibernia is in. You only have two cards left in your nation deck. Uh, so plus, plus the Celtic gold. Oh, yeah, plus plus the card itself, yeah. And I've only got two as well. Yeah, you do. Yeah, but Nigel, for, for Nigel, it's a problem. For me, it's it's an opportunity. It's okay. just I'm getting there really slow. Right. So. So. <coughs> the first action. I'm going to play Britannia Secunda. It's a region and draw a card. Mm -hmm. you might have to move your state card just down here a bit. There we go. Second Are you action. Going to garrison anything no, in it? No, no. Okay. Second action, Sir Percival pops up again. Hello. Sorry, so I, I made a tiny, tiny mistake. Uh, uh, I meant to discard one more card that now gets since then shuffled back into my hand. That's I was fine. Dumb. That's fine. Sorry. Okay. Then so. I'll return an unrest. You return an unrest. From my hand. So it's in my deck, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my second action. Then I get to draw another card. You're garrisoning Sir Percival? Yep. Garrisoning him, which lets me draw a card. Into where? Uh, into Britannia Secunda. Into Britannia Secunda. Yeah. Okay. And I can garrison a card. Do I want to garrison a card? No, I'm not going to garrison the card. Okay. Then Third I'm going to 
Then this is free play. I'm going to free play Lady Barrel Attack again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to abandon Britannia Secunda. Yeah. And I draw two cards. David discards two cards. Yeah. I am so happy, Nigel. So happy. I'm discarding a glory and an unrest. That's the thing. We've not seen the fame cards at all yet in this game. No, because I I suffer and he doesn't care about them until the bar shows up, which is coming soon, and then right. Okay. Yeah, the bar's in the discard pile at the moment. Oh, so it's already coming. Yay. No, it's in my discard pile. I've got, I've got to go through my deck first. Then I'm going to play Excalibur again, abandoning Vivian of the Lake. And I'm going to take those mercenaries. So well, you play death, Excalibur, right? you abandon Vivian of the Lake to break through for a civilized card. Yeah, I think so. Let me see the market again. There's the market. No, I'll take the temple. Ah. Yeah. I was you afraid break was through, which means you get the progress. Yeah. But you don't get the unrest card. Okay. So the new card that comes out to replace it is Shadow. Oh, that's a green one. That's a good green one. I'm just going to change your progress up because you now have 13 progress, Nigel. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Two, four, six. Yeah, I've got 13 as well. Correct. Okay. Right. End of your turn. Um. Yes, I'm going to. I'm. I am going to discard two cards. Draw. So I've gone through my deck. So I'm adding another. Uh, so Gwen finally appears. Okay. And then, which card would you like to put a progress on? Uh, we'll stick it on the mercenaries. Yeah, right, so solstice course. phase. David, you want to do yours first? David is discarding boats and conquer and draws two cards. Okay, and Nigel. Significantly better. Okay, so I'm going to... Do I want to take... How many unrest are left in the pile? Uh, I think it's quite good now. It's four. No, I don't think I do. Mm, yes, I want a quest. I'm going to take an unrest. You take an unrest. Which and, quest would you like to go on? Uh, we're going to this time. We're going to go on the quest for the boar. Okay. Which is another game. We will I'm not waiting. try to pronounce. No. <laughs> okay. Um. And then I've got to discard a card, must discard a card. Yeah, it's gain a progress. Which would be um, just the city, so that goes into the discard pile to get a progress. And then... City of Camelot. Yeah, and then I am going to discard... Uh, I'll discard my dog to the Camelot to... I think I'll get a population. Population? You have four population now. Right, yeah. solstice phase is over. Next round. Whew. So I will play Belgica into play mm -hmm. to draw a card. This is a region. And I will garrison Metropolis under Belgica. Second. Oh. <laughs> so every card in the market except the Shadow has a progress token on it. Correct. Which means if I have to exile, it has to be the Shadow. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways I'm not happy. Like, it's not even funny how many ways I'm not happy. Why did I discard my Conqueror? Does anyone know? No. I forgot about this. Like, I had the choice of which to discard, and I discarded my Conqueror instead of the card that forces me to exile. And I could actually Conquer. I was a dumb dumb. It happened like five seconds ago. This is why all my playtesters say I can never win a game without cheating. <laughs> and then I point, and, and then when I say, yeah, but at least that way I have a chance, they point out, now nah, you still lose. 
I don't want to let the shadow go. I like the shadow. But everything else is horrendously inefficient. So apparently the boar's name is pronounced Turk Truth. Well, there you go. Yeah, they can clearly tell that from the spelling. No, oh, I can. Looking at it, yeah. Yeah. The, the W's are U's. Exactly. Mm. And the C-H is a K. So there you go. Yep. Ish. Thank you very much, Chrissy. I'm going to play, play the flood planes, cry a little on the inside while exiling the shadow. So it's you fine. play the flood plane. We're going to stack your regions up here because you've got a lot of them. You may put a card from your discard pile into your history. Yes, that will okay. be the boats. Because and then exile a card from chance. the market. And you, can, you can't exile a card that's got tokens on it. So that goes. That's in the exile pile. Yep. Put that sideways. Gets replaced by the cape. A region. No. So the card goes into the unrest. The unrest card goes into the unrest pile. And then you may garrison a card into the floodplain. Yes, uh, into the floodplain. No, but I have historied uh, uh, boats. Okay. Mostly boats and you boats. have one action left. Is that which right? is going to so, be the so port. Take boats out of his deck? Is what you're saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. But no. you know, I can. And uh, our third action is port, and I'm immediately activating the port, so I get two materials. So you're activating the port. I can put them like that. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Go on. Since it's my turn, it's a smaller cheat than what I wanted to do a minute ago. Yeah. Um, you're not playing the port? <laughs> no, I am playing the port. I am not playing the flood plane. Because okay. Because I don't have to anymore. Because the port lets me draw a card from my discard uh, pile. Yeah, no, but we, we have we revealed the case. We've and revealed a card, haven't we? Oh, Mage Knight fine. rules. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> Can't rewind back before the new information was no, revealed. No, no, look, the cape will still come out, I promise, okay? It's up to you, Nigel. Uh, Do you want to let him? Explain how you're doing this, David. So uh, uh, I'm not playing the flood planes. Mm -hmm. My second action is playing the port. Mm -hmm. we, at which point I only gain one material instead of two. But then I pay both of those material, one of those materials, and one of my progress to draw conquer out of my discard pile. And then as my third action, instead of the flood planes, I play conquer for one progress cauldron to pick up the step. At which point the cape will come out. Yep, that's fair enough. Thank okay. you. So, so Shadow's still in play, basically. So Shadow is still in play with the unrest on it. Yep. yep. But you get the step. Yep, sorry about it. I really wanted to figure this out. And, and the cape comes hard. out there. But and the floodplane is still in your... The floodplane is still in my hand. And, now with the and your boats did not get put into your history. No. Correct. And, right. and I, I think, should have and yeah, I think you spent, three progress you spent and one progress. Yeah. Spent yes, a progress but, and a material. Oh yeah, but I get the progress back from from the the step I bought. Yeah, yeah. So you and you exhausted the port to give you that, to play the conquer, yep. to take... Right, gotcha. We fixed it. Thank you. Sorry for the cheaty cheaty. It, it, I knew I wanted this somehow. It was just hard. Right, your turn to put a progress token on something. Uh, well, that's going to be the shot of so we're not back here next turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if Nigel bad buys it, then at least I can have the Oracle or something. And you draw back up to five? Uh, yes. I'm just returning three unrest for my action. Oh, God. So you're... I'm just returning three unrest. Doing okay, a so a all three actions. I'm doing a revolution. Oh, this is a thing we've not seen yet. Yeah, so on your turn, we haven't seen this yet, but on your turn, there are actually three different things that you can do. And everything you've seen so far has been activate, which is where you get three actions. But there is innovate, which you can always do, uh, but rarely. And the revolt, which is also, as you've seen, rare. But this is the, this is the thing that Nigel is going to do. So basically, you return any unrest cards in your hand to your unrest pile. You don't need to pay for them. You just put them all back. And that's your turn over. Yep. You still put a progress token on something, though, don't you? Yeah, I stick a progress on the mercenaries. Mm -hmm. And then we do the solstice phase. Yep. I've got to draw back up. Uh, 
Uh, to answer Kevin's question, yes. That's exactly what we're doing. I'm managing everything remotely. Um, David and Nigel have their own decks and they are telling me what they're playing and I'm recreating the game here. Um, to, 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 to show people to understand. There, there you go. Th yeah. th this is going on my table. <laughs> so, and it's working. I, I don't have Nigel's tableau set up. And I occasionally drift out of date with the market and then I look yeah. at pause and update. So, yeah, yeah, essentially, so, I'm running the market and telling them what's there, but they are managing each of their, their decks in their hands and they are telling me what they're playing. So, yeah, it's working uh, well. Solstice, right? Solstice. David, you uh, have three, sol no, two Solstice abilities. Uh, I will be discarding the step to draw a card. Yeah. Which one is my draw deck? Why do I have so many things on my table? This one is my draw deck. Uh, then I will be discarding uh, um, Armorica mm -hmm. to gain, I want to say, a population, but no, it's my turn because uh, Nigel already gone, so he's not going to force me to discard two cards again, which is, you know, preferable. In which case, I am indeed going to gain one population. Okay. Yes. You have, you have two population now. And three progress, yes. And three my progress. Turn? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So nope. I, I'm, it's, um, I'm, I'm discarding. Solstice. I'm discarding my temple to get another progress. Yeah. And then. Oh. Did you come a lot? Yeah. Do I want to? I'm not. I don't. I'm not discarding. So, um, uh, no, I quite like my hand. I'm just stick with that. That's fine. Right. Okay. So. Uh, cool. It is the next round, but I'm just going to want to go to the chat because Chuck asked the question, a very good question earlier on. Do you need to know how your opponent's deck works or can you play without knowing? Now, I've got my thoughts on that, but Nigel. Okay, so I think, I don't want to compare this to Race the Galaxy because there's nothing like it, mm -hmm. but like Race the Galaxy, you can play doing your own tableau and pretty much ignoring everybody else and you can do quite well. Yeah. However, if you know what the other decks are and you know roughly how many points they are, what their strategy is, what cards they've bought, what they're likely to be doing, you can adapt your play to be a bit more effective. Mm -hmm. or, so, or at so, least not put progress on the tributary on the a moment after uh, the, he got the tributary buying card, for yeah. example. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you can, play, you can play in your own little world if you want. And it'd be you'd be fairly successful, but if you know what other people are doing, you'll I think you'll be do you'll do better. Right. And David, same same thing my, from you. My thoughts are that that's another thing the difficulty ratings help you with. If I am playing the Romans and you're playing the Carthaginians, then I won't do anything massively surprising to you. Right. I will have a couple of cool cards you haven't seen and but they tend to be either pinned so you have time to learn them or single use and then self history so mm -hmm. I'll punch you once and then they'll go away so yes I'll have my cool moves but what I do is roughly what you do right if you're playing against the utopians or the arthurians or the olmecs and you don't know what they're doing then you know if the opponent is capable and won't hang themselves on that deck, then you're in for some weird surprises. Right. So that's why I'm checking the Arthurian deck constantly, because I know exactly how Nigel would play as a Roman, but I have yep. no idea how he will play as an Arthurian. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, my, my couple of comments on that is, first of all, I don't think you should be worried when you're going into your your first few games of this oh, no. as to, oh, I'm playing against such and such a nation. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm really going to struggle because as Nigel says, you can just play your first few games concentrating on what you're doing and just, and just learn it that way. Um, but the other thing is, I just want to ask you two now, what percentage of your brain power now is being spent thinking about what the other player is doing compared to what you're doing? Is it 50-50 or is it 90-10? Uh, me, it's probably, because our theorems are quite tricky, yeah. I'm probably spending 70% on me and about 30% on David. Okay. Uh, David? 
I, I, I tried that much, but because I still don't know enough how the Arturians will do well against me, it's just like, yeah, whatever, let it go. Right. So it's like, like, like I tried to think more about it, and I made so many mistakes, as you've seen. <laughs> so now I'm more focusing on at least optimizing my own stuff. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Thank you for that if, if, discussion. If anyone, anyone watching is wondering how can me, one of the designers, not have an idea how to play well, it's very much possible. First of all, because Taish is the lead designer and it's his system, and uh, he, I think, I have never beaten him at a time when the game wasn't broken. Mm -hmm. uh, but also because because I'm more the crazy idea guy and the the let's put down the rules kind of guy. Yeah. So. So as long as the concept and the motivation and everything makes sense, and then Nigel played it seven times and 10 times and 15 times a deck, and he told me that it was fun, then I played it once. I said, yeah, that makes sense. Move on. So yeah. it's, it's different roles. Nigel knows everything about every deck. I don't. Yeah. Cool. Right. It's your go, though. Cool. For whatever uh, round we're on. Yes. I have two population and three progress, right? You do. So I'm going to play the Druids to pay one of those pop to break through for the Shaduf. No, for the Oracle. So you play the Druids, you spend a pop, yep. you break through for the Oracle, so you get the progress, you get the card, you don't get the unrest. <laughs> but you I do get Nigel the unrest. Does. Oh, yeah, yeah, but Nigel gets the unrest because it's Celt's ability. Fun times, yes. Now, because there are no more uncivilized cards in this pile, the replacement comes from the main deck. So at this point, Correct. it could be it could be anything, and it is an uncivilized card. There you go. So Very happy it's diplomacy. Time, so. Then I am gonna play Oracle to draw two cards and discard one of them. So you That's play a Oracle. Play. That's a it's free a free play. play. Doesn't cost an action. Okay. Mm. Life is hard. Mr. Albertson has joined in the chat. Good evening, John. Thank you for joining in. Hello, John. His first comment was, is this game finished? And what I thought he meant, I thought he was being funny. I thought he was referring to this might be like a prototype that we're, you know, playtesting and, you know, <laughs> the game's still being worked on. But, no, he no. means, did Nigel beat me already? It, yeah, he means, has the game finished? Well, it yes. nearly ended with, with collapse. It <laughs> nearly <laughs> ended with a collapse. Yeah. Um, then my second action... Uh, why are the tokens not anywhere where I want them to be? I can My move second... them here if you want. There you go. No, I mean of mercenaries, <laughs> so I can exile. I know what you mean. Yes. Um... Ooh, do I want the defense of cape? That might be fun. Or do I want that one? Or do I want to... How many unrest are in the discard pile? Loads. Yeah, but I will still lose because of the five victory points I get because of mine. So I should not ignore this problem. Five cards Niger... in the unrest pile. Niger has Camelot and the Temple, and I have nothing going for me. So I am gonna, as my second action, play Hibernia. Mm -hmm. um, to take back Druids. Nice. And the question is, do I want to play Druids now for the Shadow? Do I want to play Druids now to get rid of an Unrest and gain a pop instead of having to spend the pop? Or do I... Uh, life is so hard. Are you garrisoning a card in Hibernia? Very good question. Uh, yes, I am garrisoning an a, 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 a Conquer. Mm-hmm. Uh, should I? This is a terrible plan. No, an advance. I'm garrisoning an advance. And my third action will be... Pa, 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 pa. Yes, my third action will be floodplain. Garrisoning my conquer. You may put a card from your discard pile into your history. Boats can now go. Okay, so... That's gone in. That's gone in. Exile. Let me. Way too many cards. That's there. Read, that's there. Read, that's read, there. Read, and now shit. you've historyed the boats. The boats are history. Oh, sorry. It's not leadership. It's diplomacy. 
It is diplomacy. Yeah, the uh, exile diplomacy. That's that's one diplomacy green card that I care about. Gone and is replaced by uh, the Axumites. That's a history lesson for people there. Yeah, who are they? <laughs> well, anyone can tell us for ten gaming rules points. Uh, that's true. Yeah, ten gaming rules Video points if count. you can tell us who the Axumites are. Somebody just going to Google it and te <laughs> type in the response from Wikipedia. <laughs> you totally yeah, know it's going to happen. Weak. Yeah. Cool. Then I have two cards left in my hand, so I draw two two from my deck, which causes a reshuffle, and okay. I add Britannia to my okay. like mine doesn't have any crappy second or whatever. I get the proper one. Yep. And uh, I shuffle. Yeah, well, the uh, the naming of Britannia is just that's what the Romans called them. Mm -hmm. Britannia Funda Secunda. So it's where that, that's where those names come from. Because obviously King and Uncle I was Romano need Brit. To add the progress somewhere and it can go to the Cape, please. Okay, right. Nigel, you'll go. Okay. So make sure I do this right. So first thing I'll do is I'm playing Avalon in this. Yeah, and I'm going to return Sir Bevedere from my discard pile to my hand. Okay, and then I can garrison a card. I'm going to garrison King Arthur. King Arthur is being garrisoned. Garrisoned in Avalon. Avalon. How, how, how thematic, eh? Yeah. Um. So that's my first action. Second action. I'm going to play Guinevere finally. So this David gets a progress. Whoa! So all other players gain a progress. Because she's so lovely. Everybody and then knows. you can choose to either acquire an uncivilized or civilized card or abandon King Arthur to free play an empire card. Yeah, and, and I am have to put the temple in play. So I am abandoning King Arthur to my discard pile. So you can abandon King Arthur even though King Arthur is garrisoned. Well, you have to abandon. That's what abandon means. Oh, of course. Yeah, from, yes. From play. So he's, yeah. he's got to be off on the land and then... Guinevere summons okay. him back. And I'm for that I'm gonna play free play Talus and the Bard. Right, which uh, normally can only be played if you are an Empire. But, but that not. breaks I'm the rules. Barbarian. Yeah. Right. Because Guinevere lets me play him for free. So right. I'm playing him for free. Yeah. And I'm finding um Sir Gwaine from my hand. Putting right. Him, putting him in his putting him into history. And so what does the word find mean? Find means you look through your hand. Mm -hmm. Your discard pile, your draw deck, and your nation deck. Wow! For that card, and the right. and, then, and then if you've searched one of those, if you search something other than your discard pile or your hand, you'd have to shuffle. But I found it straight away in my hand. Yeah. So, so this goes into your history. Yes, yeah, going into my history. And, and 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 quick qualification: if a card says find a particular card, then you yep. must look through all those things until you find it. Yeah. Uh, if a card, if a card says uh, find a region or find a knight, then you can say stop. okay, I'll choose one of these. Yeah. 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 You, you can stop straight away. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, um, so you've done then, that, and, and then, now we have a part of the game that we've not seen before: is yeah. the fame cards. Yep. So I look at the top two cards of the fame deck. Yep. So David shuts his eyes. So David's going to close his eyes. <laughs> Because this is the part of the game which is secret. So Nigel is looking at the top two cards of the fame deck. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't like the sound of that. Which just, one? Just say I... left or right. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, I think I'm going to take your left this one yep okay and the other one goes on top of the deck yep. back on top of the deck okay yep cool which action was that i've lost track that was my that was my second action second I've action one, i've got one action left and then i think i might as well let's not leave david hanging wondering what the heck it was i'm gonna play, You're gonna play it. it okay it's not the one that you got that I'm wondering about. It's the one that you left me that you're. I'm it's awe inspiring, which is uh, an interesting fame card because it's a permanent one. It stays in play, and it basically increases your hand size by one. But which the fame cards. Which he desperately cards... needs. 
mm. she desperately needs because uh, uh, the artillery, the, the the nation power essentially decreases its hand size by one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can see that the fame cards are actually worth a lot of points at the end of the game. So it's seven points at the end of the game, but also with a nice ability. Yep. And then final action. <clears throat> uh, then I'm going to do exhaust action to um, discard Ooh. a card to Camelot uh, to return an unrest. Yep. Tiny cheat. I forgot to press the button on the port to gain two materials on my turn. Yeah, that's, that's fine. The button? He means uh, he didn't do an exhaust ability on the pole. He oh, right, yeah. Exhaust the pole. I'll let yeah. him. Thank you. Okay, all done. Solstice abilities. David? Uh, I am going to discard Cattle Raid, because that's a useless card now, to draw a card. Then... Who? Oh. Now that's a lot less useless than before. Hmm. Uh, address card deck count, please. Six. Okay, so now at this point I'm just racing against the end of the game. I'm not racing against Collapse anymore. Let me stare at that market uh, longingly. No, nope. I'm choosing to not use my second city. Okay, Anthony's in the chat, and he's uh, he he's he's put some strange characters about the kingdom of Axum. Okay, I don't know whether he know he, say, he says it's from memory. He says it's an ancient East African kingdom that spanned what is now uh, Eritrea, northern Ethiopia, eastern Sudan, and northern uh, and southern eastern Yemen at its peak. There you go. Correct. Cool. Now right. can he name the modern day capital of Eritrea? <laughs> And Ten points for that, Anthony, and that explains why, if you look at the Axiom card, yeah, what's his ability? It's gained four materials because it was like it was a trading center. There you go. Cool. That's why uh, it gets you so much cash because it was a trading center. So if you've got that as your tributary, yeah. Fun fact. Represents. Fun fact. Most like seriously, seriously, most cards, especially later decks, were once I was part of provoking Nigel to do crazier stuff. I was like, okay, let's pick a nation. Uh, the the Qin Ch Dynasty Chinese. What do you want to represent on them? Well, we should have something to do with walls. We should have something to do yeah. with Confucianism and legalism. We, and then it's like the mechanisms came absolutely after that. So Right. Yep. Yeah. Start with the theme. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Nigel, your solstice abilities. Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I've got this card of card to gain a progress. Yep. Um, I don't want to pick uh, Avalon Yinis back up, so I'm not, I guess I may, and I'm not going to use the City of Camelot. And I don't need to do the other one because I've still got um, the boar as a yep. quest. You have the boar of the quest, the, yep. uh, the Turk truth, yep. Yep. So we're all done, and yep. we're on to the next round. Cool. First not action, I'm going to play the Oracle to draw two cards and discard one of them. Okay. I'm going to discard Britannia. Then I am going to play Armory. No, no. Don't be stupid, David. Um, You're Oracling first. Draw two cards and discard one of yeah. them. Yep. Then I am going to use Conquer in tandem with my trusty Cauldron to turn a progress into a cape which gives me the progress back. So you turn your progress into a population? No, into a cape. Oh, sorry, I turn it into two population to two population, the cape. Which you then pay... To buy the cape, which gets to me buy the progress the cape, back. Which gets you the popul... The, yeah, which gets you that back, okay. The cape is replaced by yep. uh, the chin. Well done. Sorry, I have five gaming rules points for you. <laughs> Oh, God, I want that too. You'll get it before me. Okay, so I that was all one action. Yep. Um, second action is paying, is druiding my last population to take Shadow with that uh, 
uh, progress on it and give Nigel the unrest. Yeah, so you take that, that goes there, that goes there, you exhaust that to give Nigel the unrest. Yep. And that gets replaced by the Anadja civilized Ooh. card. Onaga, yeah. Onaga. Ooh, that, that's how I can bring down Camelot. Is that a fancy name for a catapult? Yep. Right. Siege engine. Right. And Here we go. Third action, I put down the cape. Exile a card from market. And I have a feeling Nigel doesn't need another hand size increase. So the chin can go bye bye. So you play the cape. The chin is exiled. Mm -hmm. Get replaced by the Armenians. Uh, so then I garrison the shadow under the cape. Cause... You garrison the shadow. Nigel, am I correct in assuming that the shadow ability particularly only works with uh, prosperity? Like it doesn't work on port? Or does it work on port? It says whenever you gain materials from a water card in play, the port is not a water card. No, but the port gives me materials for water cards. Yeah, that's but it I'm isn't asking. a water card. So Exactly. That's why I'm asking yeah. that. It, I think it only works on prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Then, then I'm garrisoning it. Then it's the, 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 rule book, the rule book will cover it. It'll have, a, it'll have a, an ancient entry on the... Cool. Are you using the port? Uh, I am, of course, using the port. And okay. I'm not paying to get anything back so i will just take one two three materials one for belgica one for the cape and one for floodplain, floodplain. you get three materials nice and then i am garrisoning armorica to draw the last three cards of my deck into my hand which is now empty when you say garrison do you mean discard yes i meant discard okay yes see i know shadow works with pulps if you look in the rule book page does it where does it say that? On page 19. Page 19. The pesky page 19. Shadow. Okay. okay. Then then I am discarding the I'm discarding the cape instead of playing it, and I'm playing the shadow instead. Which means I only gain two materials, but I gain a progress. So what are you doing? Sorry, you're not playing the cape? No, he's not no, playing the cape. cape. I play the shadow and use that with the pole instead. Yep. So you didn't discard, you didn't exile the chin? Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I just put him on his back on the top, that's fine. Yeah. So, sorry for reading right. information. That was a, a rule mistake assumption on my end. Yes, part. yeah, that's fine. Go, and the cape people, is being... Go check, go, go check the glossary. It literally mentions the shadow. So. It does. So because you've got the shadow in play, when you use the port, you gain a progress. So instead of gaining three materials, I gained two materials and a progress. Yeah. That's much better because I can use a progress as either progress two pops or a victory materials. point at the end of the game. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I now have three, four, five, six, seven progress. So I'm going to cash it in for a big chip. Have you drawn your last card from your nation deck apart from the Celtic gold? Uh, no. I have you one haven't. card left. It's uh, still there. Yep, I've got you on seven progress as well. Nice. Right, Nigel. Okay. So, first action, I'm playing Vivian of the Lake and getting a progress. Mm -hmm. So, Vivian of the Lake comes out, you gain a progress. And that's being garrisoned by Merlin. And Merlin is going there. Second action, I'm playing... Morgana, Marigina, Mar Mar yeah, Marigina to everyone gets an unrest. Yep, counting the deck. You play Morgana, everybody gets an unrest. There is now two left in the deck. Wow, that went quick. And then I'll abandon Vivian the Lake. Yep. To get the boar into a discard pile the and boar also, is now in your discard pile and then the last card which is britannia flavia gets yep. in my discard pile as well how many cards to the grand grail nigel i've got i've still got lancelot and then the grail okay can you not take can you not go for the grail though until no, you've got all of the other ones all, all the other ones it says the grail you can't use the grail 
Ah, cannot be targeted in the quest area unless it's the last impending quest. Right, okay. So it's the last thing you've got to do. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. And him playing the Graal, not getting it, triggers the end of the triggers game. Triggers the end of the game, yeah. So I need to score some points. But most of my points come from my watery lands. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play the Assyrians for a population. That's Which a is a free play, play. yeah. <laughs> then on my last action, I'm going to play Excalibur and abandon Avalon. Uh, where's Excalibur gone? There you go. So you play Excalibur, you abandon Vivian of the Lake or Avalon. Yeah. To break and, through for a tributary. Break through, and I'm going to take the mercenaries. Or a civilized card. You take the mercenaries, you get the two progress, you get the mercenaries, and it is replaced by pharmacy. That's pretty good as well. Okay. Uh, did I put out a progress? I have a feeling I did not put out a progress. No, you probably didn't. Um, I'm trying to catch up my progress, Paul. I think I've got quite. Yeah, let's put mine on. Uh, I don't know. Well, I think I've got 19. Progress? 19, I've got 19. Okay, I've done 20. I must have miscounted. Fine. 19, that's fine. Let's put it on the Exomites, please. Mine. Yep. And, and then, then I, I to put one out as well. And then I'm going to use uh, King Arthur's Colt. Discard the mercenaries to return an unrest. Uh, so you're exhausting because uh, yeah. Camelot's Camelot's not in, in play. play. Camelot is in play. Did I accidentally remove Camelot? Camelot I think I did. Camelot has not been removed from play. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I accidentally removed it. It's all right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So you discard a card to return an unrest. Yep. Okay, got it. And then that's the end of my turn, and I'm going to put. Uh, um, progress on the on the pharmacy. Yeah. Okay. Solstice. David. I discard step to draw a card, but my draw deck is empty, so that will be drawing my last card of my nation deck, which is my favorite one. Unrest. Unrest. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Draw a card, and I'm gonna discard step again. Mm hmm. That just happened to draw a card. Done. Okay. Nigel, your soul's disabilities? No, I don't. Yeah, I'm going to... I have to discard a card. Yeah, so now you're on 20 progress. Yep. Do you want to go on a quest? Yeah, I will take the unrest. You take an unrest. Bring in Lancelot. Lancelot goes here. Okay. And, and do you want to use the city of Camelot? Uh, yeah, I'm going to discard a card and gain a population. Population. Okay, that's all the solstice abilities done. David, you go. I will do a revolution and return one, two, three, four, five unrest from my hand. You got five unrest cards in hand. Yep. Wow. I've cycled my deck out for it. Okay, so there you go. Five unrest cards in there. You stick a progress out, and that's the end of your turn. Uh, the progress will go on the chin. There you go. Okay. And then I draw four cards from my deck. So that is collapse gone and out of the way now, pretty much, isn't I it? I have no more unrest left, yes. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm good. This was my okay. last one. Nigel. Uh, right, so me, I'm going to play... Britannia Secunda to uh, draw a card, which brings in the final battle. Okay, so your nation deck is empty. Yep. You're so drawing that, a card. So that, and you're, so that comes straight into play. Yeah, your actual deck is empty. Yep, so I so draw that. This is okay. special because it says on it, yeah, put this card into play when game. Card pile, but this one doesn't, it comes straight into play. Right, okay, and this has a solstice ability. Yeah, and if you look on the back, there's no way you could put it because it's not got the normal back. Ah, uh, right. You've, you've actually given it a different back so that people don't accidentally put it into their deck. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Nice. It also gets you get to see the full lot of the art as well without... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. 
So it cannot be abandoned or recalled. And in the solstice phase, you put a knight into your history or take two unrest. So this is bad. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I'm in the right. final battle now. Okay. And this is because I went down the, um, I didn't go down the Merlin three knights route yeah. to get my quests. I went down the fast and not very uh, less efficient route. Right. So there actually, there's two ways to play the King Arthur deck then. Very yes. much so. Right. Okay, cool. So. Uh, absolutely. So it's me to now to decide how I'm going to mm -hmm. play Did this. you want to garrison anything in Britannia Secunda? Yes, I think I do. Uh, I'm going to back garrison Merlin again. Right. Okay. I'm going to move that over there now that we've got the space. Where's Merlin gone? That's what I always keep asking myself. Uh, there he is. Found him. Okay. He's off to the woods. So, first action I'm playing uh, Sir Percival. Returning an unrest from my hand. Yep. And then sticking him in Britannia Secunda to draw a card. Uh huh. And do you want to garrison something else? Uh. No, I don't think I do. Okay. Don't think so. No. Um, second action. Uh, well, it's a free action. I'm going to play uh, the dog, Careful, careful to uh, okay. draw two cards. And then put one yeah. back. So you play King Arthur's dog, free play, draw the top two cards of the deck if able, and return a card to the top of your deck. Yep. Didn't find what I was after, but never mind. Okay. Then, uh, next action, I'm going to play King Arthur mm -hmm. and abandon Britannia Secunda. Yep. To acquire uh, a region or a tributary. Uh, and I acquire the Akamites. Okay, so because it's acquiring and not breaking through, you get the unrest that comes with it. Correct. Okay. The replacement card is the Armenians. What's with all the tributaries coming in a batch? Yeah. And then my third action, I'm going to play out the ball. Which is Tyrion. in hand. Yeah. Yep. Turk Truth. Yeah. And I'm not going to do his special ability because I haven't got a card to play. Right. And that's it. That's my three. Okay. We'll stick so a progress this... token on. Yeah, we'll stick a progress on the hills. Right. Solstice phase. David. I am discarding Cattle Raid to draw a card. I am action one, action two, action three, probably. And I'm discarding Britannia to draw a card. Okay. So you done, Nigel? So first thing I'm doing is I'm going to discard the uh, K from my hand to the boar to return to unrest from my discard pile. You may discard a knight to choose exile an impending quest except the grail or return up to two unrest from your hand or discard. Right, so yeah, two unrest is going back, unrest. is it? Yep. Right, okay. Done. Uh, then I'm going to discard another card to gain the progress. With the Arthurians, yep. Yeah, 22 progress. And then I'm going to discard a card to draw a card with the Camelot. Yep. Yeah. And then you have with Camelot. Yeah, I do. Which means, unfortunately, I have got to get rid of Oh, I don't want to get rid of him now. So, Could yeah. you take two and rest? No, I'm getting rid of Sabera Deer, who needs so, to go looking for Excalibur, so he's gone. He's so dead. thematically, he's been killed in the final fight. He's dead. Yeah, he goes Just into a history. flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. He's going to bite his ankles. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> End of the round. Uh, Solstice phase is done. David, your go. 
Okay, I am gonna first action play the cape. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm being dumb dumb. Mm-hmm. But maybe not. No. Okay. I'm gonna first press the port. Okay, so you exhaust get the port. And the shuttle to get two materials and the progress. Yeah. So you get a progress and two materials. Yep. Then I am gonna play Glory. Ah, so this is another card we haven't seen before, but I, I played I've this card a lot when I've played. This is the glory card. So this card cannot be garrisoned. You abandon three regions to basically get a fame card. It's one of the main ways of getting fame cards, uh, but not for the Arthurians because they haven't got a card like this. So which three regions are you going to abandon? Belgica, Floodplain and Celtica, which will put Metropolis and the Conqueror back into play as well. Yeah, so Belgica... So Floodplain and so Hibernia should stay with advance essentially. So Hibernia is still there, yeah. But the uh, Celtica should be gone. Oh, uh, yeah, because that's a region as well, isn't it? Right, yep. There you go. Okay, so you've abandoned, abandoned those three, and now it is time for Nigel, to, Nigel close to close his eyes. Yep. So the one on the left, David, was the one on top of the deck. Okay, let me give me one sec to look at them close. I am almost definitely going to pick that one, but let me read the other one. Yes, I am definitely picking the one, that one. Yes. Okay, so that goes back on top of the deck. This card goes into David's hand. You can open your eyes again, Nigel. Well, he won't have to wander long. Okay. Uh, my <laughs> second action is going to be playing Conquer. Was that not your second? No, nope. I shadow ported for an exhaust and then started with glory. Okay, yeah. So your My second, second action is gonna be conquering, and uh, there are. Uh, let's let's walk through this. There yeah. is an action. Not not the exomites. Exomites have been conquered. There is an Armenians there with no progress on it. Correct. That is worth three point. But this is an acquire, not a breakthrough, because I don't have any population. Therefore, why am I even thinking about it? Give me the region with the two progress on it. So, so he's, he's not he's not taking tributaries, he's taking the region. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, you need the population. Uh, toss a progress into the cauldron, turn it yeah. into two progress. You know the drill. Yeah. So get rid of a progress to gain two population, then use the two population to acquire the region. Yeah. Which comes with two progress, two progress and that Do goes I into have your eight, nine, or ten progress. I'm a little bit fuzzy on I've the details. I've got nine. Okay, I agree. Good. Okay. Third action. <clears throat> Before I play my third action, mm -hmm. I'm gonna play Oracle to draw two cards. Oracle however, is a free play. Yeah. However, there's only one card left in my deck. Okay. So I drew that one card. Yep. And then I put Celtic gold right. into my discard pile, thus becoming an empire. Yeah. So if, the, if people are watching who haven't seen the previous playthroughs, what happens is on top of this Celtic gold card was the nation deck. Once the nation deck is empty, the next time David needs to add a card from his nation deck, it's actually this card that gets added. And as soon as this card gets added, the, the, the nation has now developed. It is no longer a barbarian state. It is now an empire. What that means is certain other things now happen and David can no longer be playing the Conqueror and the Advance cards because uh, they're, they're way beyond that now. Yep. Well, the Conqueror I might if I have chain mails. Okay. Um, so my discard pack currently only contains Oracle because it didn't shuffle in because it was still resolving. I yep. drew two cards from my deck. One was the last card, the one was the other one. Mm -hmm. Could you please refill the market? Yep, so the market refills with an Oasis. Okay, I'll look into that later. I don't think I can pick it up now. And then this is where I need one second, because now it's time to pick up my development deck and start counting. Yes. So at this point, every time David's deck runs out, instead of him adding a card from the nation deck, which doesn't exist anymore, basically gets a development card. Now, the development cards 
unlike the other decks, do not get shuffled and put face down anywhere. Anytime you get a development card, you choose which one you want. Uh, and then that basically goes into your into your discard pile. But you have to pay for it. They all got you do have to pay for it. There is a development cost on there. Uh, but these cards running out is one of the end game triggers. Oh God, that's so good. But I also want that one. They're all so good. I want all of them. But <laughs> uh, that one I can pay for. Hmm. Yeah, no, this is the right. This is the way. Um, but my deck is they big, and if I don't get it, then it's worthless. <sighs> anyway, before I figure out what my fourth action is, I'm gonna free play Glorious. Uh -huh. Which says if Empire develop for free, and then yeah. put this card into history. So this is the this is the fame card that uh, that David got. It is worth yeah, six points. Yeah, very thematic for the Celts. There's old. Uh, yep, yeah, there is Boudicca on there with the ninth. So Eagle. if an Empire develop at no cost, but then this card goes into the history. So this is a one use card, but you still keep the points for it uh, yes. at the end of the game. So I think I am gonna take Celtic Innovation. Okay. Because even though Versin get Torix is one or two points more, mm -hmm. but if I can draw Celtic Innovation even once, it's worth it. Okay. So that so goes into my into your discard pile. Discard pile is the only thing that doesn't go into my hand. Yep. And then, as my third and last action, I am gonna play Celtica, garrisoning the druids underneath. And it says, you may place a card of your choice from your discard pile on the top of your deck. I mean, it would be a shame if I put Celtic Innovation on the top of my deck. It would. Well, I'd do it if I were you. I would, too. <laughs> and then okay. at the end of my turn... Nope. That, do I want to discard one of these cards? Yes, I am discarding Armorica to draw three cards. One, okay. two, three. You're all done. Oh, nice. That turned out to be four cards, so let's put that one back. Yep. Progress token? Progress token, progress token. Let me look at my hand. Does it even matter anymore? What does Nigel not want? Uh, let's put it on the region. Okay, on the Oasis. Nigel, mm -hmm. you'll go. Yep. Uh, I'm going to play uh, Innis, play Avalon. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to return uh, Merlin from my disco pile to my hand. Okay, to your hand. And then, and then I'll get Garrison him. Okay, so Merlin comes back from your discard pile to your hand. You're then going to Garrison him. Yep. Uh, that's the first action. Second action, I'm going to play Morgani again. Mm -hmm. seen it before. Everyone gets an unrest. Yep. Of course you do. Uh, Innis goes away and Lancelot. Goes into my discard pile as well. So the quest is done. Uh, you also take the top card of your... Yeah, there isn't one. Nation deck, but there isn't one, is there? So... No. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've got one action left. So that's that quest done. Uh, I'm going to free play the Assyrians for population. Yep. Uh, and then I've got one action left. I'm going to discard two cards to return an unrest. To return an unrest. Yeah, because unrest are worth minus two points at the end of the game, so you don't want them because they're bad cards. But they are also negative points at the end of the game. Right. Progress token. Uh, yeah, I'll stick a progress token on the tributary that hasn't got one. The Armenians. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that that took my dilemma away. Thank you. Okay. So solstice phase actions, David. I have am two. gonna discard the cape to draw a card, and then I'm gonna discard a conquer to draw a card. Okay. Nigel. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Grail with King Arthur's Call. So you take an unrest. Yeah. 
to put the Grail, which is the final quest card. You are now yep. on the quest to find the Holy Grail. Yep. Okay. Then I'm going to discard a card to get a progress. Putting you on 23 progress. Um, I'm going to take two unrest for the um, battle. Yep. Here is my opening. Here is my opening. I can yeah. do it. That's loads of unrest you've now got. Yep, yep. And then this I'm gonna and then I'm gonna kill Sakai and return to unrest. Kill. Using uh oh sorry, discard him, sorry. Discard yeah. Sakai. Not kill him, discard him. Discard Sakai to the built to the board to return to unrest. Okay, ah. you may discard a knight. Yeah, okay. To return to unrest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. But that, that that four is worth minus four points to me, so I can't it really, is right. It needs, okay, it needs to go at some point. Just and you need yet. the dog for that to go, right? Yeah, I've got to find yeah, the dog. you need to exile he's in, it. He's in this fat deck somewhere. But while then, it's there, it's it's doing really well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to have a nice. discussion later on about the thematic nature of these, because obviously I'm aware of King Arthur and I'm aware of some of the legend. But there's clearly a lot of history, a lot of stuff in here that I, I don't know yes. what that is, and I'm I'm curious I mean, about that. I've read Once and Future Night uh, and and uh, whatever who it was ages ago now I feel so uncultured about the some somebody white I don't remember his name they wrote the book about the uh, Merlin aging backwards and and all that fun and plus what so all the tv movies with sam neil and whatnot and then yep. nigel came in and, and schooled me on the actual history and i was like yeah oh yeah okay i get it <laughs> but yes we'll have that discussion later on right next round david you're up uh i i am worried because i feel like i'm doing amazingly which means i'm gonna lose but until then let me have my fun and don't laugh at me when mm -hmm. i do so first action i'm gonna play Belgi belgica which is draw a card. Yep. And, and you may a garrison a card. I don't think it matters if I garrison a card or not. Okay. Because my second action is glory. Right. So Tossing you're abandoning all my regions. So the shadow stays in play because it's not a region. Yep. Oh, they are all I, abandoned. I, I, before I do that, I push the port, which gives me one material and one progress. You get one material and one progress from the port before you do that. And then give me a sec because I might pay three materials to take a card back from my discard pile, but I need to run some budget. Okay, tell me when I've got to shut my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, that, yes, I have budget for it. So is there a card in my discard pile I urgently need back? One. Is there a card in... There is no card in my discard pile I urgently need back because glory now is not great because I have burnt my whole land. Mm -hmm. So I'm not spending the three. Uh, uh, so now Nigel can shut his eyes and I want to see those yeah. cards. Okay. These are your two possible cards. Okay. And the other one. Okay. Let me look at things in my hand. And this was my second action, right? Yeah. I would like to choose the one I've seen before. This one? That one, yes. Okay. All right, you can open your eyes. One action I'll left. Go, I'll go put that in my hand. So, one action left. That'll be uh, what's in the offer. There is nothing green there. That's rather... Wait, I think I forgot to exile something. Nope, I didn't have an exile on it. Shame. Um, I mean, such a pretty Camelot. Does Nigel still have a Camelot in play? Yes. I mean, it would be a shame if something happened to it. It's no? here. Yeah, it would be a shame if something happened to it. it I would like to play Celtic... Um, uh, shame. Andres deck is full, right? Whose deck is full, sorry? The, the unrest, unrest deck. 
Uh, oh, probably. There's loads in there. One, two, three, four, five, oh, I'm, six, I'm seven. I did it in the wrong order. Of course, Celtic Innovation was the card I wanted to put back on the top of my deck. Um, yeah, so Celtic Innovation to acquire the Onager. And it's fine. I'm not going to cheat again because I actually feel like I'm doing okay now. Okay, so you may acquire that. So you do. You get the unrest. Yep. yep. And then and each then... other player takes an unrest. Yes, of course. Okay. And then I'm going to play Great, which is what I got from the Fame deck. Great will be your and... third action, will it? No, uh, no Great is a free play. That oh, it's a free a play. Yeah. Action. Right, okay. Yeah, so free play, but it gives you another action. You may yeah, put so this card put, into sorry. your history. Yes, I would like to put it into my history. Because it's worth more points if it's in your history. Okay. And you need a replacement my card. I'm going to reshuffle one more time during the rest of the game, and I'm not confident I will draw it at the right time. Replacement card is leadership. Okay, and then there should be an Onager somewhere in my hand, if I find it there. And you have one and, bonus action. Uh, and I will play the Onager on that bonus action. Which you are allowed to do because you are now an empire. Each other player abandons a. Yep, city of Camelot. Yeah, so City of Camelot has been abandoned, goes to your discard pile. Yep. Gain two materials per abandoned city. You may acquire a region or a tributary. So, there is. Uh, so, what, what. Let me look at the region. It was. What was it? Oasis. Oasis. I mean, it has a water drop on it. Do mm -hmm. I think I have 10 water drops by now? Five water drops? I don't know. I can probably take one more. It's one point. And it's an acquire, not a breakthrough. It yes, is? I will take the Oasis with the progress token. Okay. That gets replaced by a river. Okay, and I've got I you on will... 11 progress now. Mm -hmm. I will now discard Heals and Oasis. Okay. Nigel. Oh, progress token. No, sorry, I'm not going to discard Oasis. It's fine. Andy's lost the sound. I hope everybody else is okay. Let us know in the chat if anybody else has lost the sound or not. I'm hoping it's okay. They won't hear you though, will they, Paul? No, they wouldn't hear me. No, nope, it's still good. Sean says it's still good. Excellent. <laughs> Must be Andy. Right. Uh, where's the progress token going, David? Uh, the progress token is going on leadership. Leadership. Okay. Right. Nigel, you're going. Yep. So, uh, first action, I'm playing Sir Lancelot. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the Welsh. Okay. So, uh, Lunslot Lynn. There you go. Yeah. So, so, find Guinevere. Find, which I've looked through my draw deck. I couldn't find It's not my disco pile, not my hand. I looked through my draw deck. I found Guinevere. Okay. Guinevere's off to... Off, off to history. The, uh, history. Yeah. He then gets racked with guilt and gets exiled. Right, so exile. So you've lost the victory points for Lancelot. Yeah, Lancelot's just. You do take the top fame card. Yes, which David probably knows already. I think it is marvelous. Yes, I was not happy about that, but sure. What can you do when Lancelot Nine lands? Nine VPs. I'll have that. That's great. Right. Nine yeah, VPs. That's, yeah. Wow. That's my first action. First yeah. action. Interesting. Okay. How many cards are left in the glory deck, please? In the glory deck, there yes. are two glory cards, two fame cards. And the uh, King of Kings. And then okay. the King of Kings. Okay. So I need to get there before he does. And he sorted <laughs> the sound. Excellent. Right, then I'm, then I'm going to free play Marvelous. Yep. So free play, draw the top card of your deck, yep. if able, yeah. and choose to either discard it or return it to the top or put it into history. Yeah, it's the Accessamites, and I'm putting them in history. So the Accessamites is going into history. Yep. Then I'm going to give up. I'm going to use the exhaust action on my boar, paying a progress. They exhaust the boar, paying a progress to put to free play an play. empire card. Yeah, putting temple into play. Okay. 
I'm then going to I'm then going to exhaust the temple mm -hmm. and discard a card, which would be um, an unrest to so discard uh, a card gain a progress back to gain a progress back. Yep. Then okay. I'm going to play Britannia Primer. So that wasn't an action. That was exhausting no. to free play that, and then yeah. you've exhausted so second, that. Second action is now to play Britannia Primer, where I draw a card. Yeah. And you can garrison a card. Yeah. I haven't got enough knights left, have I? So I'm going to have to do it this way, I think. There's a war going on. People are dying. Yeah. So Merlin goes under Britannia. Mm -hmm. He's off again. And then my third action, I'm playing Britannia Flavia. Drawing another card. Flavia, bring another card. And I'm not going to garrison this. You're not going to garrison. Okay. So, progress token. Yep. Yeah. Uh, stick a progress on. The Armenians. Okay. Just out of interest, should you have changed from a barbarian state to an empire? No. Nope. You nope. don't. So, the, the Arthurians don't do that? No. Nope. They right. they, did they ever become an empire? Nope, they died. Nope. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We can true. watch them die in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Solstice. Solstice. David. I am discarding Cattle Raid, the raw mm -hmm. card. I am discarding. I'm going to be strange. Um, Metropolis, the raw card. Yep, that's much better. All done. Mm -hmm. Nigel. So I'm going to gain two unrest from the final battle. Yeah. Um, We're down to three cards in the unrest deck, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. It's fine. It's all under control. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to discard King Arthur from my hand to return the two unrest using yeah. the ball. Then. I'm going to return an unrest from my discard pile using, using the temple. The temple, yeah. So so that's that those three solstice abilities done. Yeah, and then I've got to discard a card. To gain a progress. To gain a progress, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next round. Okay, I am going to play Floodplains to put, a car, put Cattle Raid from my discard pile to the history. So floodplains put in a cattle raid. Then exile card from the market. Well, the region has to go, so it goes. Exile a card from the market, so the the river has gone and been replaced by a forest. Mm -hmm. then... Are you going to garrison a card into the floodplain? I'm thinking about it. No. Okay. Then uh, then I'm going to press the port. To gain mm -hmm. one progress and one material, and now I'm gonna do what I was an idiot to do last turn: pay the three materials back to take uh, Celtic Innovation from the put it back on the top of my deck. Yeah. So this is using or do I want Celtic yeah. Innovation to be honest with you? No, I am gonna take Glory back to the top of my deck. Okay. And then. One, two, three, four, three. Uh, then, as my second action, I am gonna play. I am gonna play step. Mm -hmm. Exiling a card from the market, which will be the forest. Which will be the forest, naturally. Replaced by. Sacred Pass. And then as my third action, I'm going to return an Unrest by spending uh, three materials. You return an Unrest by spending three materials. Okay. And then I'm not going to discard any cards and draw the last three cards from my deck. Okay. 
And the progress token is going on. Don't care. Uh, what, which one does Nigel not want? He would probably want that. Put it on the sacred pass just for giggles. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cause... Nigel. Oh wait, no, he's he's no? he's barbarian. I'm still I'm barbarian, not. and you're not. Yes, but I can't point. use it. Still, uh, the pharmacy. Yeah, makes more sense. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Nigel. Okay, I'm gonna play. Regarder again. again. Mm -hmm. so both so players taking unrest. Yeah, both taking unrest. Merlin and Britannia Primer hit the disco pile. Uh, uh, I got Britannia Secunda. Did I play the wrong yeah. one? Uh, I said Primer, but it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Um, to put and both the active quests, so the Grail. And Grail hits the disco pile. Hits the disco pile. So as soon as this card is played, the end of the game has yep. been triggered. Unfortunately, that means Nigel just scored eight victory points. Yep. Okay, that was your first action. Yep. Second action, I'm going to exhaust the boar. So that's not an action. Progress. That's, that's not an action. So pay a progress. And then I'm going to play Talas and the Bard. Okay. And I'm going to find Merlin because he's a knight. Yeah. I'm putting in my history. So and look Merlin at the top two cards of the fame deck. Has been found. God damn it. Nigel got to the fame deck before I did. So David's closing his eyes. I am not happy. There was my 11 point plan. Uh, yeah, the one on your. Uh... Yes. That one. one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love that one. That so that was Tully's in the Bard. That was free played. Yep. So I am that so just mad. goes to your discard. I am such an idiot for not putting glory on my deck a turn earlier. Still got two actions left. Still got two actions left, yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna play Peridur to Percival to return the unrest that Morgana gave me. Uh, where's he gone? <laughs> There he is. So as yeah. Percival comes out, returning the unrest. And then I am going to exile him to find the Grail. So choose to return, choose and re so choose, return an, uh, an unrest, and you may garrison in a region to trigger that card's play effect, or find the Grail in your discard pile or draw deck and exile this card. So Percival, yeah. so Percival is exiled. And you found yep. the Grail from your discard pile and put it into your hand. Yep. And you play it, triggering the end of the game. Yep. I'm now going to play the Grail. It still, it still isn't an. It still isn't an action. It is not an action because it's free play. Free play. Triggers in game end. You may draw a card from your history. Interesting. Okay, so you can get a card back from yeah, your you history. Yeah, you can resurrect someone. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's the Holy Grail. Grail. It's the Holy Grail, of course. Love it. Love it. <laughs> So I'm going to resurrect somebody. I'm going to resurrect Sir uh, Berevere. Yeah. So Berevere, Sir Berevere, he's not dead yet. Yeah. No, not dead yet. You thought you see, he wasn't. He's been resurrected. Uh, you may acquire an exiled card, but not a knight. Yep. So look through the exiled cards. You can have forest, river, or diplomacy. Um, is that what's left? God, it's all got exiled. Yeah, that, have, this is it. <laughs> God, yeah, the only thing worth any points is diplomacy. I'll take diplomacy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I've got one action left. You have one action if left. If Nigel beats me by less than four points, then I know exactly where it went wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna, it would I'm be gonna very play, good if it was that close. I'm going to play King Arthur's dog. Yep. Um, to draw two cards. Yeah. And then you can exile Turk Truth yeah, if it's I in play. It. I'm so exile the boar him. has gone, been exiled. Yeah, we have, we've hunted him down finally. Finally. Yep, I think I just took back whatever nice lead I built up. Okay. You've still got one action left because these are all free plays. Yeah, I've still got one action left. Damn. 
Do I? Yeah, I guess I kind of decision points really. Need two actions. I've got one more turn. Fine, I'll play Avalon. Yeah, you got one more turn. I only got one turn left. I don't like you. And then I'll bring back uh, King Arthur. Avalon has been played. You return uh, King Arthur from your discard pile. And, and are you going to garrison something? Yes, I think I probably am. I am going to garrison King Arthur in Avalon. Okay. That's fine. In That's Avalon. me done. Right. Progress token? Uh, yeah, because I don't think I want to do... I haven't got any of that. No, yeah, so that's right. Uh, oh, and I'm going to discard. I'm going to exhaust. I haven't exhausted the temple this turn, have I? You have not? No, I've not exhausted the temple this turn, have I? Discard a card to gain a progress? I will gain a progress that way as well. And then you put in a progress token in the market? Yeah, I'll stick it on the sacred pass. Right, solstice. I will discard uh, Celtic Gold and Conquer. Mm -hmm. Draw two cards, which, which shuffles my deck. Ah, so which you get means a I am buying Versingetorix for four Versingetorix. materials. Yep. Which I have. So you have to spend four materials for that. I only have three. I counted it out. I definitely had exactly four. Okay, I believe you. So you have Versingetorix. That, that, that's why I spent the three only once, not twice. Right. And Nigel, your solstice effects. Oh, so I have to discard a card for progress. Yep. Um, I will return an unrest from my discard pile. Using the temple. Yep. And I'm afraid King Arthur from Avalon gets goes to uh, goes into history to not take the unrest from the um, battle. Right. So King Arthur goes into into the final battle and gets killed yep. in order that you don't take the unrest. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So that is it. So the end of the game has been triggered. What you do is you finish that round and then you play one more round. So because Nigel was the second player, that finishes that round. We are now on the final round of the game. Jonathan's just joined in. He's just finished his game of Outer Rim. Thank you very much for joining in, Jonathan. You're just about to see the final round. So, David. The Empire of the Celts. Yes. First action, I will play the Ar I will play Armorica, not gar bothering the garrison. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to press the port to get uh, two materials and one progress, because the progress is still a point. So two materials, uh, one progress. That uses the, the port and the shadow. And the shadow. I could yep. put the card back onto the top of my deck, but there's no point because the game is over. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I am going to play Glory just to take uh, Praiseworthy that's left in the deck. So second action is to play Glory, abandoning the three regions to yep. take the Fame card, which uh, is Praiseworthy, which is terrible. Praiseworthy. But I have the Oracle, and the Oracle gives me an extra two points per card. So merely by acquiring this card, I scored five points, and okay. I had no action worth five points. Well, rather right. this was two actions worth of six points, so yep. I figured that's as, whereas if I just return on rests one at a time, that's just two points per action, so. Okay. I don't know why that card's in play. That card should not be in play. Nope. And nope. my third action is, at least I got lucky on that, is Celtic Innovation. I will buy leadership uh, with the unrest and the progress, but Nigel also gets an unrest. So what are you acquiring? Uh, leadership. leadership. Yes. So leadership comes with the progress. Uh, but comes with the unrest, but Nigel gets the unrest because of your Celt ability. Yeah, and so, I, place... no, so I get two unrests, one from the uh, Celtic Innovation and one from... Oh, the... yeah. Yep. Nice. Yep. Okay, it's replaced by Gambling. And that's me done. You are done. And since I have no cards that score for cards being in play, I am now going to pick up my cards. Yeah, okay, right. Nigel, so, final three reaction. turns of the game. Yeah, so look, I'm going to play the Assyrians for, for I'll, a population. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Don't yep. let Nigel score 70 points while I'm not looking. Okay. <laughs> Second, uh, so 
that was that was a free play. First yep. action, I'm going to play Excalibur, discarding Avalon, abandoning uh, Avalon, discarding and, uh, Avalon to break through for a tributary or yeah, I'll take I'll take the tributary with the two progress on it. The Armenians. Yeah, I'll take the Armenians. Yeah. Okay, so that's yours along with the two progress. Gets replaced by money lenders. Okay, second action. And then working out what's the best. David completely went. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just clear that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not worth doing. Yeah, that. David said he had to go, but I didn't realise he was disconnecting Skype. So maybe he's got to reboot his machine or something. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Um, then. Just to uh, acquiring that's not that good, is it? No, it's not worth it. Right, I'm going to play Vivian of the Lake for another progress. Where is Vivian of the Lake? Vivian of the Lake comes in. You gain a progress. And I've got one action left, which will yep. be to discard two cards. To return an unrest? To return an unrest, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Two points. Right, so I mean, we still do the solstice phase yeah, at the end of the game? We still do solstice, yeah, because okay. I've got this mandatory for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm back. There he's back. See me. Let's put yeah. him on. There you go. Oh, there. Cool. Do, uh, are you, solstice, do you David. Do the, solstice, have you got any yes. solstice? Uh, since I don't have any cards scoring for population and I don't have any cards scoring for materials and I can't make progress at solstice, I think it doesn't matter. Okay, because it's one point for every five, is it? No, progress is Ten? worth one. No, that's, only the so, that's the bot in solo gets points. Oh, right, so so materials and stuff you've got left aren't so worth it's anything. nothing unless you've on... got a card. Right. I'm okay. checking. So, like, if you had the money lenders that's on the t in the market right now. One point for every ten materials. There yep. you go. Right, okay. Yep. Do you want to do the scoring or do you want me to show or how do you want to do it? Uh, well, I, Nigel's just doing his solstice, solstice phase. phase. Sorry. So the first thing, I'm going to discard an unrest to gain a progress with um, Arthurians. Discard an unrest. No, discard, Sorry, dis discard, discard unrest to gain, to gain a progress. A progress. Yep. Yeah. That's that then, then. Then I'm going to use a temple to return the unrest. Yep. Yeah. And then, unfortunately... Uh, so Beradir goes back to the uh, history pile. He's dead again. Final battle. He I mean, he, he's done really well. He's fought, died, been resurrected, <laughs> fought again. And then, I, and then I draw a card for Vivian the Lake, but it doesn't help because it's the yeah. end of the game. That's it. Okay, excellent. The game is over. I have a scoring pad here. So we can write down the scores. So, this is something that I'm sure Nigel is more practiced at the game, so he can do it better than I can. Yeah. But I have a fairly good method on how to score this game. Okay. And if you give me a second to make a mess yeah. out of my table. So just just to remind everybody, there are if the game doesn't end in collapse, there's six ways the game can end. Either the main deck is empty, which was this, or one player's development area is empty. Which I was very close to. Right. Now, am I right in thinking King Arthur doesn't have a development area? Correct. Correct. He has, right. a, he has a quest area. Yeah. The King of Kings is flipped face down. So if the next card would have been acquired, the next fame card would have been acquired, that would have triggered the end of the game. The Vikings take uh, a particular card. The Arthurians play the Grail, or the Utopians trigger Shangri La. So three of the end game conditions are specific to uh, nations. specific nations. Yes. Right. So your scoring method, David. So um, uh, I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen progress. Can you confirm that? Uh, fourteen progress, yes. Okay. Then you toss obviously all the developments you haven't uh, developed because they don't score. Yep. And then what I do is take find every star or question card. Now it's important because there are some cards that say if in history score higher so yep. i know that my great is in history but my uh praiseworthy isn't so i put those two out there to remember and then what yep. i do is uh i find every star 
put out the stars. There's another star. There's another star. Please, I need more. Um, there's another star. And, and I've got that's quite it. a few. And then, and then I take whatever resources we're not counting, so materials, exos tokens, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And because the rule is that you can score a maximum of 10 points of each of them, and I'm very bad at remembering numbers, I tend to just go and put things on. So I have at least two cards scoring me points for greens. So I need to know, and they are one point per green. So do I have 10 green cards? Okay, one, two, so three, your Celts four, five, and Versingetorix is scoring one point for every uncivilized card that you have, wherever yeah. it is. And they both, they both count, so it's not like... Yeah. You count one for one. They they both yeah. one card counts for both cards. Nope. The sad truth of life is that I appear to have six uncivilized cards unless I missed something. Don't forget the Oracle. It's here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. I've got seven. Okay, what which one did I miss? You've got the shadow, the boats, the oracle. I've got two cities yeah. and a port. Two oh no. Shadow yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. What's the seventh? That's what I'm asking. Uh, maybe I can't count. Yes. Well, I would not mind finding a seventh for two more points, but I don't think I have seven. No. Oh, oh uh, leadership. Oh, yeah. The leadership I just bought for giggles at the yeah. end. I actually forgot to put that in my deck. Uh, so that's it? worth I'm seven, leadership. and that's worth seven. There. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, take, I take tokens and go, uh, where are you? Five, six, seven, because I forget everything. And most, in most games, I don't have the luxury of you. That's scoring the points for me, so that's seven and seven. Okay. Then Egyptians scores me one point per civilized ones, including mixed ones. So yes. that's one, two, three, four. That's why the leadership was such a great buy. Okay. Five, six, six. So that's another six points. Which one was this that you're scoring? Egyptians was six points. Oracle is two oh, points okay. per two, two points per fame card. I happen to know I will have three fame cards because great, praiseworthy, and glorious. So that's another six points so far. Another six. My good cards are pretty consistent. Yeah. And then here are my two best cards: boats and shadow. The boats scores me one point for every non-bag icon I have in regions and the shadow scores particularly two points per water icons water I'm, yeah i'm 100 percent certain i will have five water icons but let's go and find them because if not i can kick myself uh two three obviously four, for the people in the chat this game doesn't take this long in real life five, no 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 we've been chatting and stuff Yes, I have exactly five water yeah, icons. So you get 10 points by, for the shadow. By the looks of it, so I get 10 points for the shadow. And then how many... Uh, I, I make it nine. One, uh, one, two, three, four. Yes, I have four uh, wheats, but it put, counts both of them. So five plus nine I'm is... Put 10 uh, on there and take one off there. Yep. So Okay, one, so cards... Two, so I'm going to put cards that have got a star on is mm -hmm. 7, 30, well, yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So 45 yep. points from cards with a star on. Then cards with a question mark on it is 6 plus 3. 6 for great, 3 for praiseworthy is 9. And then all other cards with a fixed value. Yep. Uh, first of all, you probably want to write down I have minus six from three unrest because Nigel was super friendly in the last two turns. I got 18. What? 18 what? What? Are you being And then funny? minus six from unrest. You said oh, you have 18 from your card. Oh, sorry, I haven't counted the extra fixed values yet. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, 
18, yep, 18 positive and six negative, yep. Okay, so total score, there's nothing else, is there? No, so 14, 59, 68, 86, 80. Is that a good that score? Be, that should be enough to beat most players who aren't Nigel. Okay, right. So, Nigel, have you been adding yours up? No, no, I'm going to go through mine with you so right. people can see. So, the so first... Progress. The back, so, progress, I think I've got... Loads. 20, 22, 24... I've got 29. 20, 29, yeah. Yeah, 29 anyone progress. anyone wondering on the thematic reasons, it's because the Arthurians were ahead of their times. Right, okay. They had a lot there you of go. progress. Yeah. Them and the Mino ones. Right, star cards. So, my star cards... Uh, firstly, King Arthur's Call gives me victory points for white cards. I'm just going to get all of your history cards. Yep. Because they're all here, so they're history. Right, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, King Arthur's Court is one point for each civilised card that you have. Yeah, I've got one, two, three, I've got four of those, I think. Three, four. Yep, four. That's four so that's, that's four, four points, points for that. So you can put four four tokens on it if you like. That's all right. I'll just tally them up. So four yeah, points four for, that. for that. Done. Then the temple gets one for every five. So that's five because I've got 29 progress. Yeah, so that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then the mercenaries, I get one for every four people and I've got eight. You have eight, so that's two. That's two. The uh, Akasaksamites get me one for every flag and they count themselves. So that's three. One point for every tributary in the count themselves, that's yep. three. One, two, three. Yep. That's it for stars. So 14 for stars. Right, question marks. I haven't got any because Morgana and Lady Berwick didn't make it into a history pile. And they are only worth points if they're in history? Yep, because I'm still using them. So they right, didn't okay, so it. no points for question marks. No, right. and then it's just... Your actual cards. Actual cards, which is... So the Arthurians are basically a flat six points at the end of the game. Yep. Six, seven, eight, fifteen. It's because they are expected to end with roughly three on rest anyways, so... Right. Fifteen. Twenty-four. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Forty-three. David, brilliant. David, 43, right. 46. Just start shouting random numbers at him. That'll really put him off. Yeah. No, he's the, he's the pouring of liquor. 46. I'm sorry, I need to... 54, so that... 54. You've also gone small. Skype, Skype's doing a weird thing tonight and resizing people for no reason. I, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Let's make him bigger it's again. Fine. It's because David took the blue pill, yeah. 54. Unrest? <laughs> No, no unrest. No unrest. So, 29, uh, 43, uh, 97. I would have what beaten most people. There you go. <laughs> Final scores. If it's going to focus, it's not going to focus, is it? No. So, uh, 80 for the Celts, 97 for the Arthurians. There we go. I tell you what, whoever came up with the idea of hosting a game with you two playing each other, I think that was a brilliant idea. <laughs> because I would not, to be fair, I like this game. I would not have wanted to play this tonight whilst also managing everything and running the stream. This was, I've really enjoyed this, even though I wasn't playing at all. And obviously seeing you two playing against each other, I had no idea how to play the Arthurians. I've looked at the cards. But I just didn't, I didn't get it. So seeing them being played, I want to play them myself now. They, they look yeah, really, the, the, really the interesting. Arthurian, there's, the, there's the two key cards is Merlin and Morgaine. Yeah. And you've got two routes, really. You either go the quick route with Morgaine. Which, which is what is you quick, did. Yeah. Which is quick. The downside is you burn through your, to get to the final battle. And then you're fighting off the unrest, which is why I had to leave the boar out to give me a chance to, Otherwise, I'd have just drowned in unrest. I'm yeah. particularly worried playing against the Celts. This was a very high risk strategy. Alternatively, you go with Merlin, mm -hmm. and he's much safer, but he needs three knights. 
you find the card, he needs three knights. Which, in which they're equivalent of the glory because I need yeah. three regions. Yeah, right. so he needs some Merlin, needs three knights in garrisoned. Yeah. And then you draw the quest into your hands. So you get to use it straight away. Oh, right. And you don't, and you don't get the, um, you don't accelerate through your deck. Right. But with, with David bouncing regions and other things, well, I just ended up, I went down the fast route. And then once you start, you're kind of, you're riding that horse of mm. power. You're drunk on the power. So. And how were you bouncing those regions, David? It was the I only bounced one. Cattle raid. Bounced one. Uh, no, it was it was uh, Bo Boudica, Boudica bouncing one at the That beginning. was it, Boudica. Yeah. I mean, what 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 the what the um, King Arthur really, Camelot really doesn't want to see is like invasion or something like that coming out. That's pretty yeah. miserable. I, right. I, I was hoping invasion would come out. That's like the the Celts dream card. That's like druids but with weapons. Okay. So we mentioned earlier on that you will be able to play this game and ignore your opponent. Certainly yeah. when you start learning how to play the game, you can kind of just concentrate on your own game. But once you know yes, the game... Yes, but then again, you should play the basic factions that are very similar yes. to their curve to each other. So if you look at the other guy and see how many cards they have left in their nation deck or their development deck, it's comparable to yours. Yeah, or how many looks... piles of progress they've got and that kind of yeah. thing. Is that... Whereas yeah. if a newbie looks up an Arthurian, it's not indicative of their relative... Absolutely, absolutely. But once you once you start to get to know the game, you will probably want to adjust your playstyle depending on what nation the other the other player is playing. Right now, my follow up question to that, which I've forgotten, I, I had a train of thought here, and I was going somewhere, um, and I can't remember. No, I can't remember uh, what it was. It was uh, something uh, uh, about uh, uh, the the way that you need to play based on the other player, but we've already discussed that. It might come back to me in a minute. It might come back to me. Well, so uh, say, for instance, I was playing against the Romans. Yeah. This game. If I'm playing against the Romans, I don't think I would have got Talos and the Bard as my first um, quest. Right. Because Talos and the Bard, it, it, gets, it gets me the glory cards. Right, okay. But, uh, but Rome goes heavily into glory. So I'm just accelerating a King of Kings ending before I even get to my Grail. Right. If I start taking any of the fame cards. Okay. So I'm probably not going to do that. Right. I'm probably going to pick one of my other quests to start off with. I might have even gone with the boar as my starting one so I can easily play um, the, the, um, the blue um, Empire cards. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and that's the other reason why the besides all the mechanical changes that that's the other reason why the Atlanteans and the Egyptians are also rated fairly high because those are the two nations that get their development choices incredibly early. Right. And the earlier you get your development choice, the sooner is your strategy in your own hand completely. Mm -hmm. And newbies shouldn't be forced to take their strategy into their hand immediately. No. no. No, as I say, I mean, even when I did the solo playthrough the other week, what was the first one I played? Macedonia. Uh, Macedonia. I, pl I yeah, played it in the afternoon. Forward. Yeah, I played it in the afternoon to learn it. And that, that, was, a, that, was, a, that was a learning curve because I was literally learning from the rule book and I learned how to play and I was like, oh, wow. But when I did that, the second game of it, which was the live stream that went to the public, I was like, oh, yeah, I got this. You know, I didn't play well, but I, I, I understood the way that the deck worked, and I felt comfortable with it, and it was great. And then an hour later, or half an hour later, I then got the Egyptians out, and then by the end of that stream, I was like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I really struggled in that second game. But if I'd have then played the Egyptians again, I'd have been like, oh, okay, right, now, now I kind of get it. Whereas, yeah, if you've bought the game and you like King Arthur, do not play the Arthurians for your first game. Just, no. just, just don't do it because you'll just you drown. You just won't know what you're doing. I think. Anything, yeah, go play, go play the Morians or something. Yeah, right, anything yeah. with three or more stars should not be touched in your first two games. Yeah, and anything like essentially think of the stars as how many plays you should play. Be uh, like one star is great for your first game. Yeah, second two stars is great for your second game. Okay for your first game, etc. 
Okay. So, so, so a five star is great for your fourth game, the earliest. Okay, at uh, the earliest. Yeah. Yeah. Sean is asking in the chat: Are there any faction tips posted there anywhere? Have you? There certainly are. I've done. We've done spotlights on all the nations apart from the Greeks and the Utopians. I don't think they've come out yet. Right. Okay. And they're either on all game geek um, in the in the four in the game section, yep. or if you go to Osprey on their blog. There's um, all the um, spotlights for all the there. civilizations. Yeah, Michael is saying, yeah, they're on they're on BGG. And are, are they posted by you, Nigel? No, they're posted by um, Osprey. By, by Osprey. Okay, but they're on BGG if you want to look, and, it, and it's Individual a spotlight on each of them. Each. Yep. Yeah, and at the bottom of each thread, I put a link to the, the rest of them. So if you find one, you'll find right. them all. Right, you find them all. Excellent, right. And for yeah, those people watching this who haven't seen anything else, you've seen the two-player game tonight. There is a solo mode. I have covered the solo mode. I've done two videos on that. They're on the channel if you're interested. And there's a campaign mode as well in the back of the solo rulebook where you basically take uh, one particular nation and you play a series of games against um, other nations. Five, and yeah, you five bots. Yeah, and then you add up your score at the end of it. So, yeah. When will this be available outside of the UK? It... I, I think for I the think... US, they promise, promise next week or the week after or something like that. Okay. For there's EU, some... it's like any day. There, there, there's some... I mean, I think you can order it from Book Depository for the EU anyway. Right. But if you want to order it from within the EU, um, I think there's a couple of shops in... A couple of online retailers in Germany that list it. Right. There's one in Belgium that's got it. Obviously, if you want it in a foreign language, then I don't know. You'd have to... Right. Or Spray are still discussing with people about localization. I yeah. don't know about that. Yeah. And obviously, you if you, obviously, if you're not, you know, if English isn't your first language, there is quite a lot of card text. There's a lot of card text on there. Yeah. And, and um, the subtleties of what do something to do something else means yeah. is lost yeah. on you, then you're going to have a bad day. Yeah. So. But basically, um, yeah, it should be available. Certain retailers have got it in for pre order, and within the next couple of weeks, it should be. It should be going out to people. I think I saw someone post on Board Game Geek this evening that they pre-ordered it through W. H. Smith and they got it today. So oh, it arrived today. That's what they wow. said. Okay. Yeah, I mean, somebody in the chat earlier on posted and said that they've been basically playing through the whole campaign and finished it. So I don't know if they managed to get a sneaky early copy. Um... I think some of the American. I think one one of the American. Um, might have let it go a little early, I think. Okay, yeah, they do that sometimes. Sometimes accidentally. <laughs> yeah, cool. Right, well, this is really enjoyable. I really enjoyed this. I hope you two did. Have you, You've played this game together before, but yes. not recently? No, no. no think... I, well, it's certainly not with the real cards. It's been on tabletop. I think I just simulate. posted the picture on Facebook two days ago while I was digging through my photo archive for a completely unrelated project to find pictures for my designer diary. Right. And, and I found a found photo from, I want to say, either, no, it was mid-January 2020. Yeah, right. that was was when Nigel and I went up to Osprey for the first and the last time. Right. And and, and that, that was the last game we played before the real cards started to get graphic yeah. designs and everything. And, and yeah. that was the only time Anthony, Nigel, Philip and I, we played a four-player game together and felt right. pretty good about it. Yeah. Uh, so it's Michael in the chat who is from the US and he got his his the other day. And yeah, I think Michael's saying he's he's finished playing his campaign uh, with one of the nations. So, really? How yeah. did you win the last one? I've never won the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Try right. Supreme Ruler mode, that's really hard. Oh, because there's different difficulty settings, isn't there? Well, there's different difficulty settings that you play on the campaign game yeah. um, where you use extra slot markers, but the Supreme Ruler mode... Um, the way that works is at the end of every end of every game, you have to throw out un, an unrest from the pile. Oh, okay, so it gets harder so and harder. So it gets harder and harder. You, yeah, right. you'll end up collapsing if you're really, really not careful. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Okay, so we'll wrap things up. Anything more you two want to add? Uh, no, no, thanks for um, everyone staying uh, and listening and having us waffle on. Yeah, and don't forget that we have another game coming from a tiny publisher in in the fall. Oh, it, it's, it's it's a small game. No, nobody would be interested in it. Yeah, it's, it's like a party game, essentially. <laughs> it's a party dexterity game called uh, falling, fall, from fall, void or something. falling in the void or something like that. 
Yeah. Uh, so long. And thanks, yeah. Paul, for doing all that. Yeah, all no, that they, as I say, this this was really enjoyable. I really enjoyed doing it, and I don't mind. Um, yeah, I I, I I I didn't mind it, and it, it was just great to see. As I say, for me, having played it a few times myself and felt a little bit comfortable with it. I now feel a lot more comfortable, even though I wasn't actually playing in that. So, yeah, that was all good. Right. You can add, you can add this game to the list next to Mage Knight for something you can always invite me for. Well, we might have to do that at some point. But, yeah. Well, you're coming here at some point later this year, aren't you? Well, he's closer. <laughs> no, I think you're coming here for something else later this year. Hopefully. I, 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 well, when you're here... That's a secret what? kick under the table, I think. That when, really when when you're here, we can we can we can do something for this. We can we can yeah. have a game of this while you're here. Just come and stay for the week. It'll be fine. Yes, well, hopefully I get COVID vaccine in this side of the century. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for you two. Thank you everybody for thank watching. You. Thanks everybody. Um, yeah. Thank you very much to all of my patron supporters. If you like the content that I create and you want to support the channel, uh, please check out the Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And I will be back later in the week with some more stuff. But I will be back with this game with a two-player playthrough next Wednesday uh, with me and a friend of mine, which won't be anywhere near as skilled as tonight. We will be using relatively easy factions, uh, but that will be happening next Wednesday. And that's going to be uh, the, la the last coverage that I'm going to do for the game ahead of its release. So, yeah, we're all done. Thank you very much again, you two. Thanks, Thank guys. you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you later on. Good night. Bye. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppers LL.